afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Alabama. I'm Jeff Hellinger along with the 1989 Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware. And if ever there were two teams that really mirror each other, it are the ones that we are going to see today. They both play very stingy defense. Both have only one loss, and they can score a lot of points. Yeah, if you like offensive football, then this is the game for you. Both teams are electric offensively. Both average over 30 points a game and can score, and they score in a hurry, Jeff. North Dakota has won 11 straight games. Their quarterback is a major reason for it, John Bowenkamp. He reminds some of John Navarre, not only in style, but size also. Yeah, yeah he's the classic drop back passer, pocket passer, who's at who passed for 2,500 yards, 23 touchdowns touchdowns this year. He has a good understanding of what they want to do offensively, keeps them in the right plays at the right time in order to have success. Grand Valley State also has a balanced offense, and their engine in the running game is this man, Michael Tennessee. He is so very active. He hangs on to the football, makes a lot of great cuts. Yeah, he is a dynamic runner. Inside and outside can take it to the house. 1,500 yards rushing, over 1,500 yards. He's their leading rusher as well as leading receiver. Boy, if they're going to get it done, it goes through Michael Tennessee. Grand Valley, the defending champions take on North Dakota. Both programs win a lot of football games, and they have brought a lot of fans. The enthusiasm is hot in a very cold stadium here in Florence, Alabama. Back in Alabama, I'm Jeff Hullinger along with Andre Ware. And we get ready for North Dakota and Grand Valley State. College football is forever defined by polls, riders, and broadcasters, coaches, and computers. But in Division II, Andre, you're talking about brackets and matchups, much like college basketball. It's an elimination tournament, and that's the way you find a national champion. You're absolutely right. Everywhere and every other sport, it's done on the field. Today, we get an opportunity to see two teams who fought it out, played through the playoffs, and it will be decided on the field where it needs to be. Also part of our broadcast team today, Sam Ryan. She's downstairs. And Jeff, for a look at what they play for. It's right here, the Division II National Championship Trophy. Now, this is a piece of hardware both teams are quite familiar with last year Grand Valley State came in here they took this home for their trophy case two years ago in 2001 it was both of these teams duking it out on the field for this trophy that's when North Dakota won it it was actually the only meeting between these two teams so Jeff Andre here they go again here they go again indeed and the last time they got together it was a memorable football game the question is will we see something like that today or will we see more points no I think we'll see a lot of points but I think we'll see it from both sidelines both teams we mentioned it are capable of scoring and scoring in a hurry. I can't wait to, to, to get this one underway, Jeff. Brian Kelly has been such a fine head coach at GVSU. In fact, his name has been mentioned maybe taking over some Division I programs. Eastern Michigan, he decided not to take that job. He's been at Grand Valley State a long time. The question is, will he stay there? Yeah, he's had a great deal of success there talking to him this week. He said, hey, I just like to win. He can win at Grand Valley State, likes playing in December. So. He may be there for a long, long time. Jeff Glass kicking off for North Dakota, and we are underway. He's the son of the basketball coach for the Fighting Sioux. Brandon Langston is deep, and that means that we will see Grand Valley State with the football first. They are led by a young quarterback. He is only a freshman, a transfer from Toledo. He is Cullen Finnerty and very, very mature, Andre. This is a guy who makes a lot of great decisions. Sometimes if you've got an 18-year-old quarterback who's leading your football team, you worry about what he's going to do on a field, but that's not been the case with Cullen. Yeah, it took about till mid-season for the light to pop on for Cullen, but he understands the offense. He's gotten better each and every week. Does a fabulous job of operating their spread offense. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. They'll start out of the shotgun. And Finnerty wants to throw. Coming near side, it is complete and thrown down at the 25 is Brandon Langston, the wide receiver, tackled by Digger Anderson. And it's a gain of five. It'll bring up second and five. Backs and receivers, Michael Tennessee, we have talked about him so much, and for good reason. So he goes, so goes Grand Valley State. And Micah Staley also, the wideout. He's a playmaker, and he plays much bigger than he is physical. Second and about five. And here's the handoff, and it is to Michael Tennessee. Wrapped up by Digger Anderson of North Dakota, a gain of one. And it'll bring up third down and about three. The offensive line for Grand Valley, a tradition of excellence. One concern, Mike Wilford has nagging problems with both ankles. He has missed some practice this week, and we'll see if he falters at all. I think one of the keys to the offensive line is how will he hold up today? 
lead it back up. So on third and three, Finnerty will keep the ball, coming to the near side and brought down short of the first down at the 30-yard line. Let's see if he has enough. Adam Stratton is there. The second effort may have been enough. Yes, sir, he does get it. So the drive stays alive. Yeah, looking at him on film last night, he, he can move around. He likes to make plays with his legs. A mobile quarterback, he won't sit in there. They'd like to have him sit in the pocket sometimes a little bit longer, but he takes off when he sees daylight. So first and 10 with the ball on the 30-yard line. And this is Brandon Langston. And Langston hit at the 33-yard line by Digger Anderson. That is his third tackle so far. The three up front caused lots of trouble for North Dakota's opponents. Jeff Mamarak is fun to watch. He is seemingly everywhere. And he is out of North Dakota, a native. Like up second down and seven. So again, out of the shotgun for Cullen Finnerty. And here comes Tennessee. He's up to the 40. He'll be about a half a yard short of the first down. The linebackers ignite the defense. They really fly around for North Dakota. They have been key in the postseason. Digger Anderson has already got three tackles in this game. He's the MVP of the group. Had knee problems, but he sure doesn't show any ill effects of that. So third down and about one, maybe a little less than that as you look at Brian Kelly, a Boston guy who has found great football success in Michigan. And pitch and a first down for Michael Tennessee. The defensive backs for North Dakota, they work very well together. And Adam Stratton is the co-captain. He may be the fastest player in the white jerseys this afternoon, and he is the one who really keeps the defensive backs together. So we've got 12 minutes and 8 seconds left in the opening quarter. Lakers and Fighting Sioux are scoreless for the Division II National Championship. This will be the seventh play of the drive for Grand Valley State. Finnerty with time. Down the middle, and it's incomplete. Ball was touched. Micah Staley was the target, but Jason Hofschneider, the left quarterback, with a good coverage. He's from Columbine High School in Denver, only a freshman. Yeah, there he's just trying to read it out and throw the quick post. They call it a bang eight sometimes, and just a quick four step, fourth outside step, and go to the post. And Cullen Finnerty got that one tipped. He's lucky, Jeff, not to actually have that one intercepted. What do you make of a freshman who has 64% completion rate? Yeah, that's that's learning and learning in a hurry. He had an opportunity last year to watch, and, and he made the most of it. Shovel pass it is to Tennessee. He's got room out into North Dakota territory to the 44-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and enough for a first down. Dan Olsberger, the outside linebacker, along with Jason Hofschneider, came up to make the stop. Yeah, they run the misdirection. They show the... Uh, the, the end around to Brandon Langston and then shovel pass it underneath to Michael Tennessee and they get uh, North Dakota going one way and coming the other. A little misdirection there from Grand Valley State. Grand Valley State has lost twice in 47 games, 45 and 2. And here's Finnerty. Firing and it is caught inside the 35 and the 34 by Michael Staley out of Elkhart, Indiana. The wide receiver, it's a gain of 11 and move those chains is Brian Kelly's offense clicking here very early in the cold of Alabama. Boy, they are moving and moving fast and gotten themselves in a rhythm offensively, Cullen Finnery. And when you're the head coach of the offensive coordinator, your quarterback is in a rhythm. You don't want to slow him down. You got the, the defense and the look that you like to see. So now you take advantage of the personnel they have on the field and continue to run plays. I saw Brian Kelly there. He's had 72 All-Americans at Grand Valley. Kennedy four of five on this drive. Here he is again. And wide open near side, Micah Staley. And this time Staley down to the 23-yard line. That's a gain of 10. And Hofschneider and Dahlen are there for North Dakota, but too late. Yeah, Grand Valley State, they have three different tempos. The green is when they are on the football, and, they are, and they're going right here. 
when you when they go yellow, they they get the play clock down around 15 seconds, and then red is that they're taking their time and really calling plays, but they're just not huddling up. They're actually huddling at the line of scrimmage, Jeff. First down for the Lakers. Out of the shotgun again. Finnerty will keep it. And Finnerty, good second effort down to about the 17. Knocked down by Jason Peterson. We were watching the video of the game against Kingsville mm -hmm. from last week, and he was doing a lot of that. A very tough kid who was keeping the ball on the option and really finding some yardage. You know, surprisingly, offensively, as, as far as a quarterback goes, they like to run him a lot. Show it one way, run the counter the other. They pull big Mike Wolford around to try to help him out. But what I found is that he breaks a lot of tackles. He's not a big guy at 6'2", just 190 pounds as a freshman, but he can run through tacklers and he gets a lot of extra yards after the initial guy hits him. The injured player right now, Matt Koss. Who has been helped to the sidelines and here in the first quarter? Opening drive for Grand Valley State. How effective have they been? Second and three. Tennessee gets the call. And this time he is stacked up. Good job by North Dakota's Jenny Gagner. Danny Gagner, he is there. He's the rover and read it perfectly and came up. Yeah, they're about in their yellow tempo here where they're taking their time. They get the play clock down around 15 seconds, making their substitutions, not really allowing for North Dakota to bring in extra defensive backs or linebackers. We try to keep them in that personnel and, and run plays from there. But they like it. You'll see the play clock get itself down here around, around uh, about 15 seconds before they snap the football. 13th play of the drive, third and short. Plenty of time. And now Fennerty out of the pocket. He's got the first down and a lot more than that. Inside the 10 and inside the 5. Digger Anderson may have saved six points as he tripped him up. Well, you have to be impressed with a young quarterback, Cullen Finnerty. He doesn't force things. He's only thrown six interceptions with 22 touchdown passes here. There's nothing open down the field. Everything breaks down. He pulls it down and protects the football as he picks up the first down. And they have kept the football for going on six minutes now. And here's first and goal for Cullen Finnerty from Brighton, Michigan. One six fade route and incomplete Micah Staley was trying to make the grab but Adam Stratton with a good coverage the free safety for North Dakota. Yeah it's just a good job of playing football both guys go up at the highest point and they fight it out and neither one able to come up with the interception but here's just a fade route push inside fade out the ball's gone on the third step from Cullen Finnerty and just runs out of room over there they'll come back to that and the defensive back comes up. And they'll go to the fade stop, which they throw it right behind the receivers back here. We we're talking about a balanced offense. Yes. Seven runs, seven passes. Now it's eight runs. As Finnerty, not much there. Jake Nordic, the outside linebacker, came up to make the tackle. Yeah, you talk about balance. They average at Grand Valley State 222 yards on the ground, 229 through the air. So I'll say that's balance. <laughs> an average at about 40 points per game. Brian Kelly. I'll tell you what this this uh, spread offense and no huddle does is it gets a defense tired. Uh, defensive lineman they can't really rush the passer. That is Finnerty on the throw and it is caught on the rebound at the one yard line by Brandon Langston. Great concentration. It looked like he wasn't going to be able to hang on to the ball but he had enough presence of mind to, to get it on the rebound. Yeah he really did and, and we talked touching on that no huddle again is that I ran a form of this in college and we loved when you see a guy get tired you go right at him he goes out to get a get a drink of water or rest up a little bit and they bring a fresh guy in well guess what he's not loose so you go at him <laughs> right as he gets into the ball game so there's really no advantage for the defense when uh, when a team's playing you in the no huddle now well, they're going to go for three points here David Hendricks is the kicker and this one is on the way and it is good so Grand Valley is on the board first, but if you're North Dakota, you have to feel pretty good that you were able to, to stop the drive and consequently give up only three instead of a touchdown. When we come back, a look at John Bowen Camp. They call it the Shoals of Alabama, a lovely part of the United States. 
And the weather has cleared up very nicely for us today. And I thought it was going to be an ugly afternoon, a little rain, but it uh, certainly cleared out and it's a good day for football. And here is the kick by Scott Green. And scooped up for North Dakota. They're going to have pretty good field position. Close to the 36 by Dan Olsberger. It is a return of 12 yards. I want to give you a basketball update here. Number seven, Kansas in control with Oregon. It's 70 55 with two minutes and 48 seconds left in the ballgame. So here is a look at John Bowen camp and we have talked about John Navarre but this is a guy also who really makes terrific decisions. He was awfully sharp against North Alabama. Yeah, wa ago. Watching him in that game he was just outstanding a good pocket passer but can move around at times and gets the ball to the, to the right guys at the right time. From the near hash mark on first and ten and the pitch is to the tailback and he gets about four or five Brandon Stroth backs and receivers Adam Rowland has been a surprise over 100 yards last week he's had TDs in nine of 12 and Willis Stadelman eight yards away from 1000 so a great mark for him if he can get there the offensive line is called the Hogs they allowed only four sacks in the regular season Ben Olsen an MVP lineman Barry Smith majoring in forensic science. And of course he likes to bury opponents. We'll see if he can do that today. Second and eight. And they'll keep it on the ground. Here's Adam Rowland and he is met and thrown back. Not much there at all. Michael McFadden and Dustin Cole converge. Kenyante Marshall is called the team's general. He looks and sounds like American Idol Ruben Stuttered Andre. He is a lot of personality and a fine football player. Transferred from Hawaii. The linebackers have played very well the last three weeks. All experienced. Watch out for Lucius Hawkins. He is off the ball in a hurry. So it's third and eight. The Stadelman in motion for North Dakota. Bowen Kemp throwing and it is caught going to be a little bit short of the first down by about a yard. He needed eight. I think he got seven. So it's going to be fourth and one for the fighting Sioux. Yeah, it just comes up a little bit short. You have to have the presence in mind if you're a receiver and you need eight yards. You got to go to about nine and then come back to the football. Looks like he may be a little bit short uh, for the, on this reception. Gonna, they may have to punt here Jeff. Jesse Allers made the catch. He is the senior out of Pierre South Dakota. And the defensive back Scott Mackey may be the best football player in uniform and all American the leading tackler on the team third trip to this game. Dion Charity is a pretty good football player too. A lot of Dion's in the secondary over the last 15 years. <laughs> you know all of them Sanders, that I know can play. <laughs> That's right. And this one Dion figures. That's How about right. Dion Grant for the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. Like All right, what do you do here? You want to go for this? Well, you maybe try to you, you break the huddle and try to get them to jump off sides, but it looks like they're going to run the play clock down and and then uh, go ahead and, and punt this one. I'll look at Dale Lennon, and I asked him yesterday about, has he got a little Bud Grant in him? He has that sort of demeanor along the sidelines. He said, yeah, that's one of his heroes. Bentaw is the punter, and this is a pretty good one. Scott Mackey will take it at a seven. Here comes Mackey. Nice spin move by Mackey and down at the 35. A fine job by Mackey. We talked about his athleticism and that he might be the best player in uniform. That's something to think yeah. about as we continue for the Division II National Championship. Grand Valley with the football straight ahead. They have the lead. Here at Braley Stadium in Florence, Alabama. Glad to have you along. This overhead view of Florence and Braley Municipal Stadium courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Keep your eye on the sky when the Saturn Lightship visits a major event near you. So for Grand Valley, it's first and ten on top three nothing. Fenerty, the ball is double tipped and skips out of bounds off the hand of Jason Peterson and also Micah Staley, the old double tip drill from basketball. Yeah, they've tried to play North University of North Dakota's tried to play Grand Valley State in a lot of zone coverage, but you know when you get spread out like that and you and the quarterback's in a rhythm, you got to find a way to get to him disrupt his rhythm get him on his back a couple of times there where he knows or he feels the defensive pressure. So second and ten for Grand Valley. And great leaping grab of the 48 yard line. 
And he loses the football. He's juggling it. Let's see if North Dakota has come up with a football. I believe they have. So the first turnover of the game goes to North Dakota. Josh Branstead is the man who made the hit on the wide receiver. And that is good news for North Dakota. Yeah, it looked like the receiver had come down with the football, but as he was coming down, it gets popped out and comes right up in the air. All of a sudden, Josh Branstead comes up with it, and he's going the other way, but good presence in mind not to give up in a big, big hit delivered by Josh Branstead. So Curicchio unable to hang on to the football, but that is what to look for from North Dakota. They are a very strong football team, yes. and trying to get those turnovers is going to be a major criteria in who finishes well today. And it, losing the football is the quarterback on the snap, but Adam Rowland coming up with the football, so the Fighting Sioux survived their own turnover scare. Yeah, both teams are on the positive side of the turnover margin for Grand Valley State, plus 15 coming into this ball game, and, and North Dakota, plus 11. So, you know, they, they are usually the recipients of turnovers. It's one of those deals where if you keep hammering the rock, you know, sooner or later, <laughs> it's going to crack. So it's a loss of seven, second and 17 for North Dakota. John Bowenkamp is the quarterback. And Oller's in motion to the near side. Here comes Bowenkamp. In trouble. Good spin move. And just getting to about the 44-yard line. Scott Mackey is there, the leading tackler for Grand Valley State. A loss of one that'll be considered a sack. Yeah, Dustin Cole helped out as well and puts a lot of pressure on Bowen Camp. They're, they're, they're a team they don't really like to get in a shootout. They, they can put a lot of points on the board, but they like to establish the run first and foremost. And you look across at that defensive line, it's not that big, with the exception of Kenyatta Marshall at 300 pounds. They felt like coming into this game, they could dominate the line of scrimmage and run the football against Grand Valley State. How about third and 19 for North Dakota? Bowen Camp. And it is caught at the 39-yard line, which is going to be about uh, very close to the first down. Willis Stadelman, the wide receiver with a great second effort. Derek Phillips on the coverage for Grand Valley. Yeah, and he's going to get a fantastic spot here. It looks like he may have the first down. Just a deep comeback. Generous a, spot. Yes, a, a good <laughs> job of coming back to the football. But that's what we talked about a little earlier is pushing past the first down marker and then coming back and allowing for room once you catch the football to have the first down. Well, they're going to come out and measure as you take a look at Stadelman. Commercial aviation. Yeah, talking with him, he wants to fly commercial airline planes, and, you know, that, that's one on him. I, I, uh, I'll ride in the back. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see if he's got enough. Oh, yes, first down North Dakota. That's big. When you can convert third down and 19, it gives gives the offense a lot of confidence. Now they can go back into that mode of running the football and trying to establish the line of scrimmage up front with those big guys. You look at the University of North Dakota up front. They're built like a Division I yeah. uh, offensive line, a couple of guys over 300 pounds on that left side. And, uh, boy, they are, they are huge. First and 10 for North Dakota with four wide receivers. Caleb Johnson in motion to the top of your screen. Bowen Camp and overshoots his target across the middle, Caleb Johnson. All right, thank you, Ron. We welcome those of you who have just finished watching Oregon and Kansas. I'm Jeff Hullinger along with Andre Ware. And Sam Ryan, we are here for the Division II National Championship. Florence, Alabama is the dream of every coach, coach and player in Division II football when they first start during the summer. And now we're down to two teams, the defending champions, Grand Valley State out of Michigan and North Dakota, who won it two years ago. It's a matchup from 2001, 3 nothing right now, Grand Valley leading, but North Dakota is on the move. Willis Stadelman on the quick screen and curls back to about the 31 yard line and it's a pickup of five yards tackled by Dustin Cole. Yeah, when you watch the University of uh, North Dakota and you watch them on film, they're very disciplined. Everybody's in the right spot. They run the screen game out to the outside to Straddleman and 
the the uh, offensive line they pull everyone even on the defensive side of the football well well coached football team they just don't make a lot of mistakes Jeff Grand Valley took the opening kickoff marched down the field and they did a great job against the defense of North Dakota it stalled and they got a three yard point conversion and that's where we stand three nothing right now North Dakota it's Bowen camp and across the middle and the official takes a nasty shot also David Wistoff on the catch William Gray was over there but the official got maybe the worst lick of all of that let's go to Sam Ryan downstairs and Jeff Big Bang and Elson I was speaking to him yesterday he told me he's playing with limited mobility and playing this game in pain he said he sprained his left MCL about a month ago so before games he's taped up all the way from the top of his thigh down to his ankle and puts on a brace gets taped up over the brace he said he can't bend his leg at all early in the first quarter until the tape begins to loosen you can take a look at him he is moving a little slower today guys I'm very proud of his Minnesota roots which he reminded us a 46 yard field goal by Jeff Glass and it is on the way and this one is no good Glass is the son of the basketball coach at North Dakota so Grand Valley has survived it remains three nothing when we come back we'll take a look at the freshman quarterback Cullen Finnerty for Grand Valley he has been strong here in the opening quarter NCAA Division II Championship brought to you by Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. And by the neighborhood built by MCI. Unlimited local and long distance for one low monthly price. It is called the Shoals of Alabama. Lovely place if you like to fish. A lot of outdoor activity yeah. around here and the weather has cleared. It has been a very dicey morning but thank goodness for the football game looks like it's going to be dry this afternoon on first down here is the pitch it is to Michael Tennessee the final running back and he runs into Eric Halstenson the inside linebacker tonight ESPN has the Heisman Trophy presentation brought to you by Wendy's at 8 o'clock Eastern Reese Davis and Trev Alberts and Mark May are live from Grand Central Station then Reese joins Chris Fowler Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit at the Yale Club for live interviews with a Heisman finalist their family members and coaches that's tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern. Andre, that's got to take you back a little bit. <laughs> it really does. Brings back some good memories. Back to 89. And here is the completion at the 35-yard line. Mike Holloway, the tight end, made the grab. Cullen Finnerty, a transfer from Toledo, has been very cool during the regular season. He has completed 64% of all of his passes, and he has been sharp so far. 7 of 10. And 60 yards. And talking to Brian Kelly, he said it took him to the middle of the season to catch fire and really understand their protection scheme in order so he could operate this offense to keep him in the right protections and stop taking some sacks. And he's done a fantastic job as a freshman having to take over for a guy like Kurt Ains, who won the Harlan Hill last year. Third and three for Grand Valley. That is Finnerty. Finnerty plowing ahead, trying to get the first down. He's pretty close to it. Brooke Meyer. On the tackle, the outside linebacker from Jamestown, North Dakota. He's a sophomore. Yeah, North Dakota now doing a fantastic job. They got to make Grand Valley. Can't give up those big plays. Make them work their way down the field. Here you see the first downs dominant by uh, by Grand Valley State offensively. The rushing yards, which is what University of North Dakota likes to do, is run the football. Passing yards, everything's pretty much dominated here. That's the big number is 99 yards for Grand Valley State. They've had the ball a little longer than North Dakota. Back to back championships. Something all these Grand Valley fans want. Some of them uh, in our hotel last night chanting such things at 3 a.m. Here's the pitch <laughs> and up to the 41 yard line. Michael Tennessee. He runs into Digger Anderson. Anderson's got five tackles already. He's the leading tackler for North Dakota. He's like a wrestler, man. He's just <laughs> grappling with offensive linemen and finding the football. Well, they, wasn't there a story floating around that uh, that he got bit by a dog and he got so mad he turned around and bit the dog back? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a tall tale. I like it, though. That's the end of the first quarter. When we come back, Grand Valley on the move. They have a 3 nothing lead. Happy birthday, Dale Lennon. It is indeed his birthday. A great way to celebrate it here, fighting for a national championship for North Dakota. Here is Finnerty pumping once, going up top. It's incomplete. Trying to hit Micah Staley, the big play wide receiver, but Jason Hofschneider 
was along for the ride who did a nice job of defense for yeah. fighting suit when you look at this Grand Valley State uh, football team they lost eight starters from last year's championship team and to be back here at this point in the season playing for a championship is just remarkable freshman quarterback a lot of young guys around scattered throughout this this uh, this football team they've gotten here by defense but they can certainly put points on the board and put them up quick well they've been good on third down they've now got third and nine they are four of five on third down conversions here is Finnerty spinning and he is down to the 45 yard line well short needed to get just shy of midfield for the first down Brooke Meyer on the stop for North Dakota yeah I mean you really have to praise Brian Kelly the head coach at Grand Valley if you're winning with freshmen I mean that that really that speaks a lot about the kind of program that you put together and the way you coach football you're absolutely right it speaks a lot about your ability to coach football players year in and year out this is their third consecutive year of playing in this championship game and having won it last year boy it speaks volumes of, of the coaching job that they do at Grand Valley State Greshel is deep and the punter is Matt Regurney and this one is short and let's see where they mark it probably about the 28 yard line that is where North Dakota will take over it's a 28 yard punt here's the ESPN 2 game track as Finnerty came out throwing the ball and rushing the football and the opening drive really putting them in great position for some points then the Grand Valley State here it's a completion and then a fumble North Dakota gets the turnover but they're unable to come up with some points a missed field goal here at Jeff Glass and we are uh, three nothing Grand Valley State so first and ten for North Dakota and the handoff it is to Brandon Stroth and there's a penalty marker the first of the ball game as he is tackled at the 31 yard line he gets three we'll wait and see what the markers all about it's usually in that area of holding yeah. You know, you, you, you talk about North Dakota being an indoor team, but I think there, there is a caveat to that, that when you are from North Dakota and you are <laughs> from Minnesota, matter. that's right. I mean, you're, right. You're, you're talking about these are very hardy kids that are used to some very, very yeah. difficult weather elements. The blood's a little thicker up there. Holding <laughs> on the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. First down. Yeah, wait a minute. You're sitting up here in a giant parka with gloves. <laughs> You and know what? If I could get a hat and then some <laughs> <laughs> some other stuff on, I'd probably put it on as well. But uh, we, you know, we're not quite as quite used to that uh, that cold climate like these guys. Yeah, are. Andre and I are a couple of Southerners. We went out chasing a space heater last <laughs> That's night. That's right. <laughs> not doing much good though. The first two twenty. Allers is in motion. Now here's the drop run. Right up the middle is Adam Rowland. And Roland is tackled at about the 25 by William Gray from Kalamazoo, Michigan, the outside linebacker, pickup of seven yards. Yeah, that's a good job on first down. They run the draw play, and John Bolenkamp uses his eyes down the field. Here is just down the field and then hands it off on first down when you have a big penalty like that and it's first and 20. You're just trying to get some of it back to get it into a manageable position so when you get to third down, you can convert. Second and 13, North Dakota out of the North Central Conference. They're only lost this year to Mesa, Grand Junction, Colorado, 31 to 24. The pitch to the far side, Stroth. And Stroth is gang tackled by Keontae Marshall from Saginaw, Michigan. He was over playing for June Jones in Hawaii. You talk about a couple of yeah. different programs not only geographically but philosophically in terms of how they approach the football as well but Keontae is a terrific leader called the general and a very engaging personality yeah two-time all-american he makes plays up and down their defensive front and you know what they said if he's not making plays then we're in trouble he's our leader up front it starts with him they've got excellent talent in the secondary but everything goes through the big guy Keontae Marshall doesn't he look like American Idol <laughs> he I mean, does look at him a little bit he really did. I asked him, could he sing? He said he could. <laughs> All right. Here's Bowen Camp in trouble, showing 4 6 speed in the 40, and wisely he goes down at the 38 yard line. William Gray was doing some head hunting there, so after the pickup of eight, it'll bring up fourth and two. You know, sometimes you're the quarterback, and this is the, the, the championship game here. You got to go ahead and stick your head in there a little bit, take some guys on, because if you slide, you're going to come up a little short for the first down. Keep the chains moving, give up the body a little bit, 
and uh, and commit to getting that first down. Boy, here they're just double, triple teaming big Keontae Marshall, and he's going to see a lot of that throughout the afternoon. Here's Bentow, the punt. It is low, it is short. Let's see what kind of bounce it takes. Mackey will watch it. And it takes a North Dakota bounce down to the 30-yard line. And that's where Grand Valley will take over the football. We're in Florence, Alabama. Glad to have you along this afternoon. No polls here. We're talking national championship on the line for Division II. Braley Stadium here in Florence, Alabama. From the Saturn Blimp. Up top. On first down. And the pass from Finnerty is complete. Locricchio makes the grab. It's a pickup of 11, enough for a first down. When you think about football teams, you don't think about a lot of travel, but that's not true with Grand Valley. Here's Sam Ryan. That's right, Jeff. And the road to this Division II National Championship game has been a road well traveled for Grand Valley State. After opening up the season in California, they have logged 13,373 miles, played in seven different states. This is their sixth straight week playing on the road. Now, Coach Brian Kelly told me that the players now judge the cities they play in based on how many pillows the hotel beds have. <laughs> the hotel they're currently staying on, one pillow per bed. It's a one pillow hotel. When they played outside of Boston, that was a five. Pillow Hotel. <laughs> Out the door with the stars and, and in with the pillows. Exactly. <laughs> a lot of fantastic. five. Very nice. That's a new way to judge hotels. <laughs> I was in a two pillow hotel last night. Oh, you you man, must have been great. a different one than I was. <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> I tell you, it's tough to win on the road. Whatever you can grab a hold to and have some fun when you're traveling you know, as a football team, that's you got to do it. Shovel pass, very dangerous in traffic, but Michael Tennessee comes up with it and he wrestled to the ground at the 45. He gets seven yards. How about that play? I mean, we were watching tape last week, and that's a very dangerous play, particularly in traffic. It is, but if you're a quarterback, you love it. Completion percentage goes up. <laughs> it's, it's easy to complete. You just shovel it into the guy. If you get it blocked up, though, seriously, Jeff, up front with the big guys, it's a misdirection play. You get flow going one way with the quarterback, and here you come with a guy like Michael Tennessee who's capable of taking it the distance. It fools a lot of defenses when they over-pursue. Well, they've been four or six on third down conversion. Now a third and seven. Finnerty across the middle. Enough for the first down is Mike Holloway from Chelsea, Michigan. He's the tight end hit by Tyler Dolan, who is out of Fargo, North Dakota, a sophomore, and that's game seven. Well, both teams are well coached here. They just clear out an area for the receiver. Crossing in big Mike Holloway, the tight end, crossing into the middle of the field, and they're so well coached, you're not going to see two or three receivers in one area of the field. They space the field. Pretty good offensively, so that it allows them for success. You have to accommodate, you have to uh, recognize it if you're North Dakota and get guys all over the field because playing zone, I don't know if that's the answer to stopping Grand Valley State. How about the first down margin now? 11 to 1 in favor of Grand Valley. Finnerty rolling and now firing the football. Good defense. Batted down by number 32, Jason Hofschneider, the left cornerback. And that'll bring up second and ten. Yeah, Jason's a first-year starter who's gotten better and better each game talking with the coaching staff. And he was a, a uh, named to the Colorado, excuse me, he's from Denver, Colorado, out of Columbine High School. So he broke on the ball there. Excellent pass coverage. They try to come with a little more pressure on Cullen Finnerty. That's what we were talking about earlier, Jeff. Just get him, maybe not get him on the ground. But let him know that you're there. Just rush him, speed up his tempo a little bit. How about Finnerty's numbers right now? 13 of 18, 88 yards. Pretty far. Freshman. And here is Michael Tennessee. Whoa, he took a mean hit. Not much there as Dan Olsberger from Minomi Falls, Wisconsin on the tackle. He is 6'3", 220 pounds. North Dakota full of kids from Minnesota, North Dakota. C1 from Colorado, but mostly they're from the great north. He's a red shirt freshman from Wisconsin, all-state performer as a senior. And uh, added a little, uh, little more weight and a little more strength this year to get in the lineup. And he's done a fabulous job this season. That's the third down numbers right now. And they are faring well. Here's Fennerty wide open at the 42-yard line is Lacricchio. And he should have enough for a first down. He gets 10. Ryan Mankey, the right cornerback from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota, making the stop for the Fighting Sioux. 
And that's enough for a first down. So the drive continues for Grand Valley State. They've got 21,000. 524 students. Yeah, here they just, they're just going to clear it out and they're going to just drag from underneath here. All this area is going to be wide open. And what I like about this play is that when he catches the football here, it's north and south, up the field. Let's get to the chain and pick up the first down. Fabulous job by uh, Mario Lucrecia. Finnerty has really hit a variety of receivers, as you can see how they have gone. So far, Michael Tennessee, and he is run down. Good pursuit by Tony Hermes out of Aberdeen, South Dakota. He is the outside linebacker. Now you wouldn't expect this North Dakota defense to have a lot of speed, but boy, they play discipline on defense, and, and they're in the right places at the right time. They don't allow for uh, guys to get outside of them, fighting off blocks in there. When they show up, they, they, show, up with, uh, they show up a little angry on defense. Look at Tony Hermes. Pads popping, helmets against one another. You gotta, you gotta like that this time of year, <laughs> this climate. Second and ten. Benedict. And it is caught at the 30 yard line. Curling back to the 27 is Lucricchio. Mario has been busy. Danny Gagner got him, but not before he found nine yards against the South Dakota defense. You know, Brian Kelly and his offensive staff, it's not rocket science. They're going to go with what works. That's the same play that they ran to pick up the long first down uh, uh, and converted it on third down a couple of plays ago. So what they do, they clear it out again and come right back to it. Hey, let's run it until you stop it. I just said South Dakota. I know there's a lot of people in North Dakota ready to put their hands around my neck. <laughs> they don't want to be described that way. I promise. That's it. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Third and one from the shotgun formation. And Finnerty will keep the football and slips. The question is, did he get enough to get the first down? I'll tell you what, he had some real estate in front of him. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he got it, and he's going to come up a little short. They may measure here, but I think he's going to be a little bit short. And a timeout. Finnerty wants to come over and talk with Brian Kelly. As it's been a nice mix of run and pass for Grand Valley. The yes. only thing they don't have to show is a lot of points right now. They've been getting the yards. They've been getting the first downs. They've controlled the football game, but they don't have a lot to show for it. 3 nothing. when we come back. The drive in question. The NCAA Division II Championship. Brought to you by the new Braun Free Glider. Braun, designed to make a difference. And by Olympus and the Ultra Zoom, designed to be small, designed to resist weather, designed to do more. Florence, Alabama, about two and a half hours away from Nashville, about five away from Atlanta. And they love their Division II football here, one of the top programs in North Alabama. But they're not here in the championship game. Here going up top, a leaping grab, it's incomplete. Inside the five, Micah Staley was trying to come up with the football, but Ryan Mankey was with him, showing the good defense for North Dakota. Boy, it's a little questionable call there on fourth down, about you know half a yard, and you got a good running back like Michael Tennessee. Go ahead and pick up the first down, but they see something in coverage and decide to go up top, press coverage, and what a fabulous job by Ryan Mankey. The the uh, right corner goes up and knocks it away right at the at the last minute in order to break up that pass and save a fourth down conversion. So North Dakota bending but certainly yeah. not breaking defensively here in the first half. It's first and ten for the fighting Sioux. Sean Bowen King, the quarterback. And the handoff is to David Wistoff, who's the fullback from Powers Lake, Indiana. Well, we figured that this was going to be a very high-scoring affair. I, I think the projection all week yeah. has been that if you're going to win this football game, you're going to have to get 40 points at least because, you know, the scoreboard's going to be very active. Yeah, but both teams here, they average over 30 points, 32 for North Dakota and 38 for Grand Valley State, but only giving up 14 and 19 respectively between the two schools. So they're good on defense, and that's how Grand Valley State actually got here. Second and eight. Bowen Camp wants to throw with time downfield and incomplete at the 39 yard line. Caleb Johnson reaching up, trying to come up with that football. North Dakota has 49 total offensive yards. 
and they've only got one first down to show so far. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to change their offensive approach. They decided coming into this game that they wanted to run the football, establish the line of scrimmage. Guess what? It's not working. That undersized defensive line and the active linebackers for Grand Valley State has prevented that. Now they got to spread Grand Valley State out a little bit, soften them up on the edges. They're one for four on third down. This is third and eight from the shotgun. John Bowen can With time, Bowen Camp now out of the pocket on the run, and nice pass. It is complete, caught by Jesse Ollers, and he is knocked out of bounds in front of Brian Kelly and Grand Valley State. Pick up of 16, move those chains. First down for North Dakota. Yeah, this may be a Division II national championship game, but John Bowen Camp has got a good talent. He is a is, is a guy with great size, 6'5", almost 230 pounds. You watch him throw the football. He's a classic passer who can sit in there. He knows the offensive scheme, keeps North Dakota in the in, a, in the right place at the right time and can move the football. Boy, he may have a bright future, Jim. First and 10 from the 46. More on that in a moment. And on the ground, good defense again by Grand Valley. The Harlan Hall Award was awarded last night. The winner. 2003 Harlan Hill Trophy University of North Alabama Will Hall the hometown boy did just fine that is the Division II Heisman Trophy I'd like to thank and Will Hall who had a lot of very kind words to say about his teammates and about the community here in North Alabama congratulations to him and firing the football to midfield and it is caught it is a pickup of about five yards Ollers on the grab let's go to Sam Ryan downstairs Will Hall a lot of folks here in this community are still upset still a little bitter that UNA is not playing in this division two national championship game having won the award last night was that any consolation for you guys I hope it was some consolation, you know, for our community and our fans and our program here at UNA and also my teammates. I hope it kind of made them feel a little bit better about the whole week, but it has been very tough for us. Now, the guy the award is named after, Harlan Hill, played at UNA. He was there last night. What did he tell you? He was just real happy for me and our team and us getting our, the program turned back around from a four and seven year to going 13 and one this year. And uh, he's just a great guy. And it's an honor to, to win an award with his name on it. Will Hall, congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. All right. Thank you very much. Congratulations. His dad, by the way, Bobby Hall, coached Mississippi high school teams to several state championships. Hmm and began at a junior college in Mississippi went to Murray State for a while and found a home here in North Alabama so on third down unsuccessful North Dakota as Marshall got his hands on the football and they'll be forced to punt the ball away Brett Bentow is the punter Scott Mackey is deep and it's low punt and inside the 15 yard line to about the 12 so pretty good punt 32 yards so when we come back Grand Valley will have the football they have the lead 3 nothing and we're in the second quarter we are back in Alabama Grand Valley State has the lead on North Dakota I'm Jeff Ellinger along with Andre Ware and Sam Ryan is at field level for the Lakers who lead 3-0 first and 10 from the 17 yard line quarterback is freshman Cullen Finnerty. and now with four wide receivers and here's the pitch Tennessee coming near side and spun down at about the 19 yard line by Jake Nordic and Troy Newhouse tonight a full slate of college basketball concludes on ESPN 2 at 9 Eastern as Anthony Rice and John Calabari's Memphis Tigers visit D. Brown and Illinois, the Fighting Illini NCAA basketball on ESPN 2 coming up tonight. Here in Florence, Alabama, it is second and eight from the 19. Finnerty with plenty of time. Now it collapses on him and he is in trouble. A penalty marker. At the 29 yard line, far hash mark, Troy Hermes. Now, we may have some defensive holding here uh, down in the secondary, and the official dropped the flag down where I felt like uh, like the receiver, Brian Langston, Brandon Langston, was being held. So we're going to discuss it. This one may be a first down. 
Yes. Your uh, eyes are good. <laughs> well, you learn to pick up those things, but uh, he was inside in the slot position trying to work on a crossing route. It was being held, and the official was right there. It's been 14 years since he won the Heisman Trophy. As we speak right now, <laughs> where does it rest? Holding on the defense, holding on an eligible pass receiver, 10 yards from the previous spot. Oh. Automatic first down. It's right in my living room. So if you walk in, you, you see it. You can't miss it. Here, Brandon Langston trying to work inside, and the, the linebacker holds him here, and then he gets gets the second shot on him as well. Wow. So well, officials see they see that that uh, especially right in the middle of the field, they can't miss it. Only the second penalty of the ball game so far. It's gone very quickly, hasn't it? It really has. Both teams are playing well defensively. And uh, this one could come down to special teams. The special teams break down by either team. And, you know, with the way these defenses are playing, it could uh, spell disaster. First and ten for Grand Valley. And here's the reverse. Langston trying to find some room. Good move and hit hard, just shy of the 40-yard line. I think he's got another first down. Eric Halstenson from Grand Forks, North Dakota, the inside linebacker on the stop. Gain of 11 and a first down. Yeah, he's their speed receiver. They like to use him on screens and some misdirection stuff here. He's just going to come into your screen around from the other side, a little flip back to him, and he uses that speed to get on the edge there. And now it's just athletic ability, able to run the football, cover it up when you get in a crowded area. Grand Valley has won 19 consecutive road games. That is a staggering total. That's first, amazing. First and 10 from the 40-yard line. Infinity throwing it is complete far side of the field Mark Catlin and Catlin getting into North Dakota territory should have enough for another first down this time he gets 12 yards aerial shots from above are being provided by the Saturn light ship the entire Saturn light ship team hopes you're enjoying ESPN's coverage of this year's NCAA Division II championship game high above that's a beautiful view I think it can convince you to, to ride in the uh, in the blimp once this one's over. Take take a little trip around the stadium. You know, I've been in one before, and <laughs> that was enough. First and ten for Grand Valley. Kennedy shovel pass, penalty marker, as Tennessee has some running room. And he is tackled, upended at the 38-yard line by Brooke Meyer. But let's see if that's coming back. Yeah, I think this one's going to come back right in that area of holding by the uh, Grand Valley State offensive line. That's what we're going to have. Third penalty of the football game so far. Grand Valley's got 13 first downs, two first downs for North Dakota. And they have dominated in time of possession as well. Yeah, Mike Pinner, the center, right in the middle of your screen, is the guy. Ten He's yards from the previous spot. Repeat, first down. He was a two-time All-State selection his junior and senior year out of Indiana. Penn High School. And there he committed the no-no. <laughs> he held. Brian Kelly, who's part of the coaching staff of last year's Hula Bowl, thought he was just passing through Michigan, maybe on the way to another coaching stop, but 13 years later he's winning national titles. It is incomplete, batted down at the line of scrimmage by Duckshire. Shane Duckshire from Knox, North Dakota, the nose guard. He's 6'2, 235 pounder. Knock down the football. So it'll bring up second and 20. Yeah, he was the same guy that was battling Mike Pinner a, a, a second ago and got himself held in there. He couldn't get to the quarterback, so the next best thing is you throw those big long arms up and comes away with a, a batted football. Boy, they, you got to be impressed with the way after that opening drive, the, the response that you've gotten from this North Dakota defense has really limited Grand Valley. Not in trouble. Good moves by Fennerty on the run. It's complete. And Micah Staley now finding some territory of North Dakota down to the 41 yard line. He picks up 21 yards. First down, Brooke Meyer on the stop, the outside backer. Yeah, he may be just a little short, but this play goes because of the athleticism of Cullen Fennerty. He's an athletic freshman quarterback who moves around in the pocket really well and it steps up continuing to look down the field most young guys when they step up they're looking to just take off and run very he's, deceptive yeah isn't he's it? matured through the season keeps his eyes down the field there and, and completes a big big pass Look at those numbers 17 and 24 already 
for a freshman. Third and one. Now Finnerty. Out of the shotgun. And he'll keep the football. He'll get the first down. Enough. Cullen Finnerty was patient enough to find the yardage he needed. Danny Gagner came up to make the hit for North Dakota. Yeah, I think mean, patience is uh, he follows big the tight end Jeremy Cochran into the hole. It's just a little counter play, and you have to be patient there and allow for the blocks to develop. And here he's patient, it finds a way in there. All you got to do is find a little crease when you need a yard and fall forward. He's tall enough. If he falls forward, he's going to pick up a first down. Now you keep your eyes on the clock as we've got two minutes left here before the end of the half. And Finnerty again wants to throw. And it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by Dan Alsberger, who is 6'3, 220 pounds. He's a freshman. And he's been all over the place, was an all, all state performer as a uh, as a freshman in high school. And boy, I you know, we had the discussion last night about points and at the end of a half, and what do you do if you have the lead? And you know my philosophy. I say go get some more. If there's time on the clock, <laughs> you, need to, you need to put some more points up there. Have them change a few more light bulbs. You know, if you're going to say that, I'm going to put a visor on you and we'll call you <laughs> Mr. Spurrier. Wrong Heisman Trophy winner. That's right. Second and ten. Man, he was always running it up on everybody, huh? A little different in the NFL. Grand Valley State will take a timeout. Brian Kelly wants to talk with Cullen Finnerty. We'll see if they can get some points out of this. A minute 51 left. 3-0 Grand Valley State leading North Dakota. A lot of fans have <laughs> made the trek. That's a nice look. You know, you can tell both of us are from the south. You from Houston, me from yes. Atlanta. We are dressed like we're going to Alaska. <laughs> it's, it's really not that cold here. It's not that bad. And both of these teams <laughs> are probably feeling pretty good about the warm temperatures here as opposed to the way, the way it is in their home. A little room. vacation for these two, two teams. <laughs> and here is Brandon Langston. And Langston to the 30-yard line. And... With a nice pickup. Tonight, some college basketball coming your way on ESPN2 at 9 Eastern. Anthony Rice, John Calabari's Memphis Tigers will visit D. Brown. And the fighting Illini of Illinois, NCAA basketball on ESPN2. So third and two for the Lakers. They've got a minute 15 and running here to put some points on the board. Finnerty spinning and down at the 30. Digger Anderson tackle number six for him from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. The leading tackler for North Dakota. Yeah, and he's been all over the field this first half. They, he's, they blitzed him. They've they got him here on a run blitz. He fills the hole, and it's just one-on-one -on -one with a quarterback. And, boy, linebackers there. They Look at that. little enthusiasm they love seeing. A quarterback approach the line of scrimmage, trust me. More the Grand Valley State fans without their shirts here, painted in blue. It's a <laughs> so lot of those guys. I'm here with about three layers on, and look at this guy with his hat on. See here, I need one of those. They need to send me one of those up here. It covers your ears. You can pull it down, tie it under your chin. Right here, you can just pull this thing down right in the corner, right around your ears like he's doing. Warm up a little bit. Well, he's enjoying things. He is not the president of the local PETA chapter here. <laughs> Man, what's that thing made out of? <laughs> Here's another one. <laughs> Boy, that took some, some creative imagination there. Yes, Got his chin strap on. He's ready for action. How about that one? <laughs> the afro, afro here. Oh, my goodness. You know what? His ears are warm. <laughs> That's for sure. Who's his date? <laughs> Having right. a good time here at the Division II National Championship game. Four, 42 seconds are left here in the first half. 3 nothing. a surprise in that we had talked so yeah. much about a lot of points being scored. And Grand Valley has moved the football up and down the field. They just haven't been able to get anything out of it. They haven't. North Dakota's only given up 19 points a game this season. So defensively, they're sound. And uh, it's been a test for uh, Grand Valley. They've had some success moving it around, but they just can't get it in the end zone. If it stays three zip, it'll be the lowest scoring first half since 1989, which was a pretty good year for you. North Dakota will take a timeout. How about a 2001 flashback? The Division II National Championship. Grand Valley and North Dakota recognize these games. 
Absolutely. North Dakota on their way to victory. 17-14, the Fighting Sioux victorious. And a lot of emotional kids hoisting the hardware. And head coach Dale Lennon's done such a fine job in North Dakota. It's only, uh, you know, this is one of those games where you, you got to, it's good to see two teams that two years ago, North Dakota was able to win it. And then last year, Grand Valley State came in and they won it. Now they're, they're back and, and fighting it out again. Let's go to Matt Weiner right now in our studio. Matt, it's all yours. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. You know, we can call this championship Saturday if you like. I'm going to call it heavy hardware Saturday. We've got NCAA trophy. Some here in the building, the teams are up against, or up for rather. We'll tell you who the finalists are for the 1AA college football title as well as Division Three and the Heisman Trophy. All 25 pounds of it will go out tonight. We'll get a preview of that plus baseball news. Got a signing to talk about. Much more coming up at the half. Guys? Forward to it, Matt. Thank you. From 1989, Mississippi College 3, Jacksonville State nothing, and that was in the snow in 1989. Now here's Finnerty in trouble, and Finnerty will be sacked by Dan Olsberger. Fine job by Olsberger, as he gave Finnerty absolutely nothing with 35 seconds left before halftime. Well, those Loss two in, of seven. Two inside linebackers, Dan Olsberger and, and Digger Anderson, have played some outstanding football there on a fourth down. They come up with the biggest play of the game. And they uh, they have themselves 35 seconds left on the clock. I think, you know, Jeff, with a couple of timeouts, you got to go get some. Try to at least try to get some points or some momentum going into halftime. Do you believe that we'll see that, or will they just, you know, be happy to go into the locker room down three zero? I think we'll I think we'll see it. I think they come out in the formation, empty backfield with five wide receivers. And Grand Valley State will burn another timeout here. And that will be their last timeout, as you can see. Yeah, they had Dan Grossman in the slot, a receiver there for North Dakota, and he was uncovered. The next closest guy to him was about 15 yards away. Tonight, ESPN has the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's at 8 o'clock Eastern. Show begins with Reese Davis, Trev Alberts, Mark May. They're live from Grand Central Station, and then Reese. We'll join Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreit at the Yale Club for live interviews of the Heisman finalists, their family members, and coaches. Should be a very close, close race. And I know both of us have uh, a little different opinions about <laughs> who should get the award and, yes. and who we voted for. Well, you know, all these guys have had uh, just tremendous seasons. And, you know, Jason White at Oklahoma, Chris Perry, we got a chance to see him up close and personal against, against Northwestern. Uh, Eli Manning's had a fabulous year getting Ole Miss back to a bowl game. And, and then there's Larry Fitzgerald, who just had a fantastic run on offense, 18 consecutive games with a touchdown reception. All right. And it is caught far sideline by Brandon Struth, and he gets six yards and down to 31 seconds. I was listening to ESPN Radio on my way, and now it's beginning to rain here at Braley Stadium in Florence and he refused to reveal who he voted for as though it was some kind of secret staff meeting or something. <laughs> didn't, well, didn't want to share with it. Uh, you, you, uh, you have to hold that close to you and <laughs> you know, keep people in suspense until the final moment. All right with 31 seconds left North Dakota trying to move the football. Bowen Camp in trouble and down he goes at the 30 yard line. With 25 seconds remaining, Michael McFadden from Saginaw, Michigan, came crashing through from his right end position. Well, I mean, he crashed through because he got there in a hurry. He's, he has four sacks on the season, but here he just, you talk about uh, Ben Olsen, the right tackle for uh, North Dakota. He went right through him, and I don't know if that knee's preventing him from getting in his pass set, but. Tell you what, Michael McFadden had a lot to do with it. Well, that is the end of the first half. As Grand Valley State leads 3-0 uh, over North Dakota. And Division II championship fact, the lowest, as we pointed out, since 1989. And it'll be interesting to see how the weather impacts the second half. 
as the rain continues to fall. Let's go to Sam Ryan downstairs with Dale Lynn. All right, thanks a lot, Jeff. Coach, and missed field goal, some missed opportunities, but hey, you guys are still very much in this, a three-point game. What do you need to do to get some more points on the board here, to get some points on the board? Well, we do feel fortunate just to have a 3 nothing game right now, and just offensively, we got to get on the field more. We got to get a few first downs, just start feel a little confident about our offensive game plan. It's there, it's just a matter of executing it. And defensively, uh, we just got to get those guys off the field. They're playing too much football. How concerned are you with their stamina with two more quarters to go? They are running no no huddle, and they are moving the ball, but they are keeping up with them. And that's where offensively we got to pick it up. This is the type of game we like to play. We like the defensive low-scoring type game, so, uh, you know, hopefully we can respond now in the second half. Okay, Coach, get out of the rain. Thanks. Jeff. All right, Sam and Coach, thank you. Get out of the rain indeed. We'll see how that impacts the second half. Now let's go to Matt Weiner for an update around college football this afternoon. Hi, Jeff. Appreciate it very much. And what else would you expect from the last two Division II national titles? That a tight game, Grand Valley State, the Lakers on top 3-0 in a tightly played halftime. Speaking of half, we've got plenty to come, including the final matchups in the 1AA college football playoffs, as well as Division III, where they all do it on the field. All that plus a look ahead at tonight's Heisman Trophy ceremonies coming up tonight here on ESPN. All that ahead. As we take you through halftime, the Lakers leading the Fighting Sioux 3-0. Back in Florence, Alabama, it is pouring and a very cold rain indeed. It doesn't matter if you're from Grand Valley, you're not wearing a shirt and life is good. The paint may be running and so your football team may be doing the same thing here in the second half. I'm Jeff Hellinger along with Andre Ware and give me some thoughts, some observations about what North Dakota's got to do to get some points on the board. I think North Dakota's got to run the football. They've got a big offensive line. That's how they got here. It's running the football and mixing the run with the pass. Right now they're once one-dimensional, and so uh, they, they've got to establish the line of scrimmage. These are the Home Depot coaching adjustments for Grand Valley State. I mean, they've been able to move the football up and down the field. They just don't have any points to show for it other than a field goal. Yeah, and they've got to get Cullen Finnery in a a better tempo, a better rhythm. They've got to speed their tempo up offensively, take advantage of North Dakota and, uh, in terms of where they're lining up and the personnel that they have on the football field. How about the weather? How will that impact all of this as they try to keep their focus? Yeah, you absolutely have to keep it because right now any mistake could cost you the ball game. In a, in a uh, weather-stricken environment like this, now it's starting to rain hard. You've got to protect the football and, and not turn it over, so to speak. First team to make a mistake in this one could cost them the ball game. You played in the old black and blue division. You know about <laughs> Chicago and Green Bay and yeah. places like that. Yeah, the elements, they come into play, but you have to remain focused. Keep, keep your mind on what you're doing and not turn the football over because if turnovers get involved in this ball game, boy, it could go the other way in a hurry. North Dakota will get the football first. Grand Valley kicking off Scott Green, and it skips into the arms of Brandon Stroth. And Stroth finding some running room and down at the 30 by Mark Catlin. Let's go to Sam Ryan, who's got a tough job in the second half given the rain. And in between the raindrops, I did speak to Coach Brian Kelly. He told me what we have to do is make some plays down the field. He said, we had, I believe, 50 plays on offense in that first half. We're just not making the big plays, only three points to show for it. He said he told the guys, especially the young guys, the freshmen, hey, 30 minutes to decide the Division II National Championship, but North Dakota is going to be there till the very end. Don't expect anything else. Else, guys. All right, Sam, thank you. At some point, does this become an advantage for North Dakota that they've hung in there, hung in there, and they're only down three? On first down, quickly to Willis Stettelman, and he makes the grab, and he gets, uh, should be enough for a first down, he gets 10 yards. Dion Charity, the right cornerback, making the hit for Grand Valley State. All right, look at this, just the total dominance on offense by Grand Valley State, 45 plays run by their offense to North Co North Dakota's 21. And boy, that's keeping the football, moving it, but now Grand Valley State's got to put points on the board. North Dakota's got to keep the football, establish the line of scrimmage a little bit more with the run, and then start to spread Grand Valley out a little bit. Didn't get a very good spot there. They're going to give them nine and a half, so it is second and less than one for North Dakota. And here's the handoff. Trying to find a little bit of room. Should have enough for the first down is Adam Rowland. 
And he is the junior, six feet, 190 pounds at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, he's been really quiet. He's their, their guy. He's gone over 1,000 yards for the season. They came into the game, and Brandon Strout was the guy early in the football game, trying to match speed with speed. Sometimes the best way to, to, uh, to offset that Grand Valley State speed is to go right at it. And now they come back with Adam Rowland. They, they describe him as being a mutter type. Well, you know what? He's going to get an opportunity <laughs> to show that he can run in the mud here in the second half. Welcome to the mud of Alabama. On first down, throwing quickly near side. It's caught by Stadelman again. And he has run out of bounds in front of the North Dakota bench by Derek Phillips, the left cornerback from Chicago, the junior. He's a 205-pounder and a penalty marker at the 42-yard line. And I think this is going to go against North Dakota. Well, that's been their Maybe. problem most of the first half is that they had drives going. No. And then they, uh, they'd they have a penalty to stop it. But this one's going to be against Grand Valley State mm. and uh, and help North Dakota out here in the second half. Maybe against Keontae Marshall. After the play, personal foul on the defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. All right. Use your head. Nice. Two guys, two big guys going at it, Ben Olson and Keontae Marshall. And it's usually that second guy that uh, when you retaliate, you're the one the officials, they see you, and, and then the flags come out. Here come the laundry. Dale Lennon, before that, you saw Chuck Martin, the defensive coordinator. And this is so far the best drive for North Dakota. And now if you're them, you want to get some points on the board. They were scored on in the in the opening drive of this football game. They'd like to put some points on the board the first drive of the second half. On first and ten, it's Allers in motion. With time wide open at the 26-yard line is Matt Vanderpan. Did he hang on to the football or not? And yes, it is complete. That's enough for a first down, a gain of 16 yards. Good throw by John Bowen camp yeah, a good catch there by his big tight end tight end Matt Vanderpan is right down the middle of the field and uh, John Bowen camp does a good job of, of keeping his eyes down the field gets everybody spread out the tight ends right in the middle of the field right in this right in the middle of the, the of your screen and boy he makes a tough catch actually the ball came loose and he was able to recover it Officials ruled it a fumble, but uh, I thought it was close to whether they were going to rule it a completion. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. First and ten. Best drive of the ball game for North Dakota. Bowen Kent, and it's incomplete. Good idea just to throw that ball away. Caleb Johnson over there, but he was well covered and very, very dangerous, if, if, you know, if he tries to make that pass. Yeah, their playmaker on defense, Lucius Hawkins, who they blitz him off the edge and they get him to the quarterback a lot. He has five sacks for an undersized outside linebacker at 5'10", 185 pounds. He read that screen out. They run it on first down on two consecutive first downs. So he's looking for it. He's able to undercut it in a smart job by John Bowenkamp of throwing that one away. Second and 10. So second down. North Dakota trying to get something going here offensively. Here comes the blitz, and it's complete. To Stadelman, Stadelman at the 20-yard line. And that is a gain of about five or six. William Gray is fifth tackle of the ball game. And then Lucius Hawkins blitzes again. They only have four or five guys in the middle of that defense. It should be a situation where North Dakota, even though they spread them out, if they keep a back in the backfield, they should be able to run the football against Grand Valley because they got them so spread out. They're undersized guys. And uh, Keontae Marshall's not even in the ball game now. So I'm, right now, I take my shot at running the football against them. They're two of six on third down conversions now, a third and four. Here comes the blitz. Bowen Camp throwing a strike, and it's complete to Caleb Johnson, who makes the grab at the 12-yard line. Yeah, he had his choice of receivers there. Caleb Johnson as well as Willis Straddleman crossing from his right to left. There's Straddleman, and then in your screen comes 
Caleb Johnson does a good job of holding on to the football, and it's surprising that, uh, that John Bowenkamp is able to throw the football, and they're able to make some nice grabs for him. With the rain coming down, they hadn't altered their offensive approach in this second half. They ended it throwing the football. They start the second half the same way. By the way, Stadlin now has 1,000 yards on the season. First down for North Dakota. Trying to find a little offensive rhythm, trying to get on the board. Bowen Camp in trouble. It's incomplete. The pressure was coming from Keontae Marshall. He sat down for a play or two after the personal foul. Coach is trying to get his attention a little bit, and now, conversely, he gets the attention of North Dakota. Well, here's a situation where you'd like John Bowen Camp to move around a little more. He's that classic pocket passer, and talking to Dale Lennon and his head coach, he said, you know, he, he stands in there. He's a big, tough kid with a lot of size, but at times, we'd like him to move around. He stands maybe too much, and there was a, a perfect example of that. Now you got to move around, buy yourself some time, have your receivers. If nothing's there, pull it down and run. Ninth drive, ninth play of the drive now on second and ten and on the ground is Adam Rowland. Rowland running into Dustin Cole. He gets seven yards so a nice mix of run and pass on this drive for North Dakota. You know when John Bowen camp was described to us as having four six speed I kind of yes. snickered yesterday in the meetings. I didn't buy it given the fact that you know, he's such a stationary kind of quarterback, but we have seen him run yeah. a couple of times in this game, and he has shown terrific speed. Yeah, he's right. You don't have to have blazing speed, just a little quickness, and be smart with the football when you pull it down, and that's what he's been so far in this game. He'll have some opportunities to make some plays with his leg. Third and four for North Dakota, down 3-0 here in the third quarter. Play action in trouble. Great defense by Grand Valley. Lucius Hawkins up with the football. And knocked out of bounds, saving six is the fullback, David Wistoff. What a huge play by number one, Lucius Hawkins from Inkster, Michigan. A 55-yard return. They come up with a blitz, and, I mean, they get to John Bowen camp. you got to get rid of the football. You see it. Receivers see it. They've got to break their routes off a little faster. Here, play action against the blitz. It doesn't work. And boy, Lucius Hawkins, they, they describe him as a big play waiting to happen. Boy, he makes a big, a huge play here. Not only does he come up with a sack on John Boyan Camp, but the fumble recovery as well and the return. All right, let's see if Grand Valley State can make the most of a huge turnover here in the third quarter. Cullen Finnerty, the quarterback, the freshman, the transfer from Toledo. He'll keep the football, take it to the outside. Inside the 15, the 10, and knocked out of bounds at the three-yard line by Adam Stratton. A great job by Cullen Finnerty, who was patient on the 17-yard game. Well, I mean, he showed some patience and, and the ability to move inside and outside, picking up blocks along the way. You talk about speed and quickness. Well, this is the guy that looks like he runs 4-6, smart with the football, picks up a block from uh, Brandon Langston on the outside as well as Josh Bork and uh, boy he turns the corner and he's got Grand Valley State in fabulous fabulous position here first and goal from the two yard line Grand Valley up three nothing trying to get the first touchdown of the game Fennerty trying to find the end zone and he is stopped pushed back by the interior of the North Dakota defense and there was nothing there for Finnerty whatsoever as Duckshire making the stop the nose guard. Yes, he is along with Steve Brennan. He's reaching in there. Boy, it gets ugly down in that pile, reaching in, trying to scrape the football out and come up with a turnover. But boy, they've got to stiffen up defensively. It's just unfortunate for North Dakota's offense when you drive that far down with an opportunity to at least tie the ball game. And we talked about it coming out of the break. Turnovers could, boy, send this game the other way in a hurry. Here's Finnerty. He'll keep it himself. And very, very close, running into Digger Anderson and Shane Duckshire. They both converge, and that'll bring up third down and goal from about the one. Well, they won't fold up this North Dakota defense. They're going to stand in there and fight tooth and nail, and right now it's who can get leverage on who. Mike Penner, he's a, a former wrestler in the middle of that offensive line, so you know he's got good leverage. And, Try to bring the rest of his uh, his comrades along with him. But boy, it's who gets lower and who can get the push when you get down here. All right, third and goal from the one-yard line and a timeout. Grand Valley State wants to talk about it. 
I think maybe they had 10 guys on the field. It didn't look like they had enough guys. But they'll talk about it when we come back. Grand Valley State trying to get a touchdown here against North Dakota. Third and goal from the one. Grand Valley State has been at their best on third down in this ball game. Seven for 11 on third down. Yeah, they came into this game 43%, which is pretty good on the year offensively for her uh, Grand Valley State. Here's Venerdy on the handoff. It's Tennessee. Tennessee into the end zone. Touchdown, Grand Valley State. This is one of those ball games, Jeff, when, when teams are hanging around and you're having a lot of success. Both teams on defense, that the first guy to make a mistake and a turnover or a big special teams play, well, you pay the price. And John Bowenkamp unable to pick up the blitz and get rid of the football. Grand Valley State picks up a turnover and they cash it in. David Hendricks, the point after attempt. What a huge turn of events. The turnover by yeah. Lucius Hawkins picking up the football and the touchdown by Tennessee, the point after attempt, is good. So now it's 10 0 in the rain of North Alabama. Michael Tennessee, the fine running back for Grand Valley State, gets it in, and the Lakers are looking good. The NCAA Division II Championship, brought to you by Bank of America. Higher standards. In the rain of Alabama, I hope everybody has their flu shots. <laughs> it's a tough place to stay healthy if you're not wearing your shirt. Hey, what? It's a bad mixture when it's rain and it's cold. Oh, it is that. And if you're North Dakota, you're down 10 zip here in the second half. Four plays, 20 yards, 95 seconds. Tennessee, a volunteer on third down for six. And Green, the kickoff. And Dreschel trying to turn the corner. There's a late penalty marker at the 16-yard line. And that will be against North Dakota. That's coming back. No, oh, it's against Grand Valley. All right. Tonight, Heisman Night. The Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Wendy's at 8 o'clock. It all begins with Reese Davis. Trevin Mark, they're live from Grand Central Station in Gotham, New York City. Then Reese, joining Chris Fowler and the Corso and Kirk Herb Street. They're at the Yale Club for live interviews with the Heisman finalists, their family members and coaches. Always one of the great nights of December. Find out who wins the Heisman Trophy. You remember where you were yes. on this exact moment in 1989 when you were wondering <laughs> if you were going to take home the Heisman? I was uh, trying to... Uh finish off the rice aisles and get in and get a quick shower and, and set up get set up via satellite because we were still playing games at that point in time and somebody wised up and decided to move the announcement back a little bit and get everybody into New York at what point did you know you were going to win I didn't know I really didn't know to be quite honest humility is a good thing <laughs> on first down North Dakota and it is caught by David Wistoff nice catch for a big guy at 235 pounds Gets up to the 18. It's a gain of eight yards. Check that out. What does Grand Valley State mean? It means defense. Yeah. They came into this football game. We talk about the sack by Lucius Hawkins. They had 43 sacks on the year. So, I mean, they know how to get to the quarterback. They're an undersized defense, but they use speed and quickness. And there's the guy, Chuck Martin, who took over as their defensive coordinator this year. When he got to Grand Valley State, they were 1-4 and four since. They've won 46 out of the last 48 ball games. He's a Chicago guy who grew up loving the Bears. And off up the middle, first down to the 30-yard line is Adam Rowland, who hit the hole in a hurry and found some yardage against the Grand Valley defense. Boy, Adam Rowland, he doesn't spend a lot of time in the backfield making moves. He's a downhill runner, and he gets his pads pointed north and south. Over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns this season. Average is about 4.3 yards a carry, so well, he earns every yard of it, but he is a tough, tough inside runner. If you're North Dakota at this point, do you stay with your game plan, or do you begin to look at being down 10 nothing here in the ring? I think you stay with it because a field goal draws you within one score, and there's a lot of time in this football game. Here comes the blitz pitch. 
And some running room for Stroth, and it closes in a hurry. It gets maybe a yard, maybe a yard and a half, and that's about it. See, I think when you bring Stroth into the football game, they're trying to match Grand Valley State speed with speed. I don't think that's the way to beat them when you look at the success they've had so far in this game. I think you stay with Adam Rowland. I think you keep coming at them behind that big offensive line, and they've had some success running the football that way with their power game as opposed to trying to get out on the edges. Boy, Grand Valley State, they'll just run everything down. Second and eight. Bowen Camp in trouble. Penalty marker. And he is brought down at the 39-yard line. A gain of seven yards. And let's see if that's a hold in the general vicinity of Ben Murphy, the center. And that it is. Grand Valley State University here in Florence, Alabama, trying to make it back-to-back -back national championships. So far, so good. They're up 10-0 right now on North Dakota. It is a rematch of the 2001 game where the Fighting Sioux won 17-14. I'm Jeff Hollinger with Andre Ware and Sam Ryan. Glad to have the Saturn Lightship with us, giving us some great pictures here yes. at Braley Stadium on a rainy, rainy night. Fabulous coverage from the Saturn. The, the blimp there. Maybe give you a ride uh, to your uh, <laughs> NFL destination tomorrow. <laughs> I think I'll pass that. <laughs> Second and 18. <laughs> Bowen camp the pitch. Stroth kind of fighting it off for a minute to bring that football down, but Dustin Cole gets to him, the outside linebacker. He picks up two yards. Yeah, you keep hearing, hearing me talk about it. I just think it's the wrong approach because they're so fast defensively that they're running everything down. That's playing right into the hands of defensive coordinator Chuck Martin. They bring guys inside, but they're still able, with that speed and quickness, to get back outside and run plays down and make plays. So what you do is you get them in, in that set and go right at them with a big power back like Adam Rowland but they're just uh, they're going to keep running Strouth at this Grand Valley State defense. Miss Martin, if he's such a Bears fan, why not do the 46 of Buddy Ryan? He said, forget it. No chance. Third down, and they'll stop it. Markers here, a motion penalty that will go against North Dakota, so attack on five. Part of the snap. Full start on the offense. On five the yards, on third down. North Dakota, three of eight on third down conversions. It's been tough for them. And a look at Dale Lennon. Dale grew up in North Dakota. I asked him if he runs into a lot of second guessing, like most head coaches at yeah. universities around the country. He says, yeah, sure, but most of the people I know in North Dakota anyway, so it's a little bit different. He's been there. He played at the school, knows everyone in the community, so... He knows him. He gets a lot of coaching suge suggestions, though, from uh, from the from people in the community. Third and 21. Here's Bowen Camp with time going long. Man out there, and it's caught in the Grand Valley State territory. Caleb Johnson down with the football, a 32-yard pickup, and there's the quick strike yes. from Bowen Camp. Yeah, and they can do that. You go right at a defense as opposed to trying to work around them. You can do it in the passing game. You can do it in the running game. And there, Bowen Camp. He uses his eyes. Watch his head and shoulders on this play. He's got a, bit, a, a post route outside here, and he uses his eyes, goes one way, and comes back to it, looks the safety off, and his receiver gets behind him. Caleb Johnson gets behind coverage, and what a fabulous throw by John Bowen Camp. So let's see if North Dakota can make the most of a big play here. They're down 10-0 here in the third quarter for the Division II National Championship. On the ground, they will keep it. And plowing ahead very close to the 30-yard line is Adam Rowland. And, Andre, that's what you were talking yeah. about, where you're running the ball inside. That's where Grand Valley seems to have their most trouble against the fighting suit. Well, if you try to run around them, Jeff, they're going to run everything down. The, the way you match speed is going right at it. And they've got a big guy who runs well between the tackles. He's going to protect the football in a crowded area. Doesn't fumble that much. I go with Adam Rowland if I'm going to run the football, and I'm North Dakota. Look at that number total for North Dakota. Yeah, just in the third quarter alone, 107 yards. Second and four. Draw play. Bouncing off tacklers. 
is Adam Rowland, who is starting to find a little bit of rhythm himself against this Grand Valley defense. And the rain is falling a little bit harder. Well, you watch him on film, and that's what you get. You get a guy that runs downhill, doesn't spend a lot of time jitterbugging in the backfield or trying to run around guys. He'll, he'll rather take you on, and that's what you got to have against a quick defense is a guy that's willing to stick his head in there and take some shots, and he'll break tackles and make positive yards for you in the running game. A cold rain falling. 10-0, Grand Valley leading North Dakota. Bowen Camp with time going long into double coverage and it's incomplete. Wanted Willis Stadelman, but well covered by the Laker defense. Scott Mackey was back there. Well, they didn't give him a lot of options to throw to. They go to Willis Stadelman on a, on a deep post route and they show a little play action, but he's the only guy in the route. I don't know if people fell down or what, but when you look at it, he's the receiver tries to give a little outside move there. He's able to get inside, but he's got help over the top by Scott Mackey and uh, there's no underneath routes or anything to kind of keep coverage away from getting deep on Willis Stratton. Ninth play of the drive. They've gone 64 yards so far. On second down, Bowen Camp in trouble and wisely he's kind of covers up the football. They'll try it again on third down. You know, we always preach first things first. You got to make sure you get the snap. The conditions have turned and uh, you're going to get a wet football. You got to stand in there. Make sure you got yourself a dry towel. Your center's got one. First things first, and that's to get the snap from your center. Then you can run the play. Ben Olsen is injured. Sam Ryan showed us before the game about him being beat up with his knee. Well, he, he's a tough guy. I mean, he's got knee injury, playing with a, a bad MCL, and he's got a, a pinky, and, and the next finger in is all busted up. <laughs> he's just... But you know what? It's that time of year where you can you can hurt tomorrow. On it's third your... and long, North Dakota will take a timeout here. And John Bowen Camp will talk with Dale Lennon. Man, they need some points at this point. Yep. Down 10 zip. The Division II National Championship. We're not concerned about polls. Not concerned. No, we're going to decide it about on the field. That's right. We're concerned about some not wearing their shirts. But other than that, it's all football. <laughs> Third and 14 for John Bowen Camp. Swinging it out to Stroth. And Stroth will not get the first down. He is up to the 26 yard line. He runs into Lucius Hawkins, who might be the MVP of this football game if this score holds. He is the one that came up, that caused the fumble, scooped it up, and it resulted in a Grand Valley touchdown. Yeah, you wonder why they throw this pass with his terrific coverage down the field and they force John Bowen camp to go to his outlet which is uh, Brandon Strouth his uh, the running back in the flat it's gonna bring up two down territory actually they're gonna try a field goal here but it was fabulous coverage by Grand Valley State glass has already missed from 46 his longest is 52 yards of course that came inside this is a 43 yard field goal attempt high snap and this is no good Keontae Marshall got his big hand on that football. And North Dakota still looking for the first points of the football game. Well, he is truly the leader of this football team. And you talk to Brian Kelly, and he feels like they got here on the back of the backs of their defense. And he's the guy that leads them. You talk about him get here, he slips through, just gets enough of the football. Kind of a high snap. John Bowen camp has to get it down, but it throws the timing off and allows for Keontae Marshall to get a get a big paw on it. If you're a kicker and you spend most of your time indoors and you have to come out here with <laughs> a slippery surface yeah. and it's raining, it's a, a much different set of circumstances. That's a good it. point because it uh, you know, it's easy to kick indoors and you can nail them from everywhere, but you come out to the elements and it's a little bit different. Grand Valley on first down. This is Tennessee. And Tennessee up to the 34-yard line before he runs into Danny Gagner and Adam Stratton. When you think about Tennessee and running backs, you think Jamal Lewis. But today, you certainly think about this man, Michael Tennessee, who has been a, just a terrific football player. He is a junior, 5'9", 210-pounder. First-year starter, and he's uh, they, they've come to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to try to quicken that pace up a little bit. Second and three. Finnerty from the shotgun again. And he'll keep the football. He loves this play. He's got the first down. 
And up to about the 46 runs into Digger Anderson. Kurt Ains was the MVP of Division II football last year for Grand Valley. He's with Sam Ryan. That's right. He played in this game last year, and you won the Harlan Hill. How long did it take for you to really sink in? Well, I mean, it was it was just a, a great, great honor to be down here for two years, and uh, I wasn't able to play against North Dakota my junior year, and it took a little while to sink in, but um, we're definitely enjoying it now. Now, you were one of 21 seniors that Grand Valley State lost right. last year. How surprised are you with their success this year? Well, I think it says a lot about the coaching staff, and it's a testament to them, and I think uh, the character of the guys <laughs> on this team, and they definitely deserve to be done. All right, thanks a lot, Kurt. Thank you. All right, guys. On the handoff. Tennessee to the 48 yard line. He gets seven. Finnerty has uh, 202 total offensive yards today on the ground and in the air. And yeah. he's made some great decisions with that little play where he fakes like he's handing it to Tennessee and then he keeps it. And really, really has hurt North Dakota in this ballgame. Yeah, they really have. You, you, just to touch on what Sam was talking about as well, they've lost, they lost a lot of players. Seven starters from the defense last year, and then they lost eight on offense, Grand Valley State, and they are able to get back to this point to the championship game and lead this football game. It's just remarkable when you start talking about guys that they lost uh, from last season. Penalty marker, motion penalty. That's going to go against Grand Valley. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yards, second down. Brian Kelly, always a lot of speculation about him. You think about Jim Trestle, how he was so successful in the yeah. way that he was able to move to Division I. Could Kelly be one of those kinds of guys, too? I think so. And, you know, he, you know how to win or you know how to coach football when you can have the type of success he had. Remember, he took over this program. He was only 26 years old. He's been 13 years at Grand Valley State, and they've won a lot of ball games. And that ought to get somebody's attention on the Division I level. Second and eight. And it is incomplete. Langston was the target. Let's flash back to 12 months when Valdosta was taking on Grand Valley. And it was Kurt Ames, the Harlan Hill winner, and David Kirkus. Kirkus, a splendid wide receiver. The Detroit Lions. And those guys really made it happen in a terrific football game against Valdosta State. And they'd love to make it two in a row and well on their way right now as we start thinking about the fourth quarter. Yeah, Kirkus went on to play in the Hula Bowl and was the MVP of that game. Guess who the offensive coordinator was? Brian Kelly. Hey, I'm going to throw my own guy the ball. Third and eight. And it is incomplete. Trapped it. But Crickio was trying to come up with the football, and for a moment it looked like he might have done it, but it's incomplete. You know, sometimes you got to start rewarding your defense for their effort on the football field, and I think that North Dakota's played outstanding defense to this point. Yeah, they're behind 10 0, but it's, it's a first drive where they finally got a grasp on things that Grand Valley State was doing, and then a big turnover. They were asked to stop them basically with their backs against the wall. Now the offense has got to reward the defense for the effort that they're giving. Stop having penalties and stop stopping drives as they're moving down the field. Lee Gresham is deep. At McGuney, here is the punt end over end. And it takes a Grand Valley bounce. Skips out of bounds at the 15-yard line. 35-yard punt. It's 10-0 Grand Valley as we're thinking about the fourth quarter. Leading North Dakota. We are back in Florence, Alabama, Braley Municipal Stadium, and North Dakota with the football. It's been 97 games since they were last shut out, going back to 1995. Got to get something going offensively at this point. Bowen Camp firing on the run. Nice strike. It's Caleb Johnson who falls out of bounds at the 26-yard line. That's a pass that he's extremely comfortable with, even going to his left, watching him on film. You know, he can time that thing out right as he gets to the edge or out just outside the tackle box. It comes off of his hands. Here you see the play fake, and he gets right outside the tackle box, raises up, and he throws a strike on the outside shoulder. Receiver Caleb Johnson does a good job of keeping his feet in bounds and moving the chains. They, they've had some success early here in the first, in the second half. They've got to just finish drives and, and get points on the board. Bowen Camp 16 of 22, 161 yards. That's the end of the third And quarter. that is the end of the third quarter. On to the final 15 minutes. 
Grand Valley State thinking about back-to-back -back national championships. North Dakota thinking about scoring some points. Who will prevail? We'll find out straight ahead as we get ready for the rain to stop. The Division II National Championship. We begin the fourth quarter. I'm Jeff Hollinger along with Andre Ware and Sam Ryan. Glad to have you along as North Dakota trying to get something going offensively. They have yet to score any points down 10 nothing to Grand Valley. Here's Bowen Camp across the middle. He has his target Stroth. And Stroth taking along tacklers up to the 42 yard line. Lucius Hawkins on the stop gain of 16 and enough for a first down for the Fighting Sioux. Boy, they just find a soft spot underneath the running back Brandon Stroth comes underneath here in coverage. He motions out and he's going to come back inside here. Bowen Camp picks up the blitz here and he, I like what at the end of this is that he gets north and south with the football, picks up the first down. North Dakota has moved the football yeah. here in the second half. They've just made mistakes. Penalties and turnovers, that's what stop drives for North Dakota. On first down. And not much there for Adam Rowland who was hit hard by William Gray. The right linebacker. Yeah, William Gray, he's, seven. he's a guy that's, that's played through some injuries, a knee injury, and the, you know, there's a lot of history there with him, but he's tough in the middle of the defense. And, well, he and Keontae Marshall in, that, in the center of that defense it makes Grand Valley State tough, tough inside. Second down. Bowen Camp with time. And it's incomplete. Caleb Johnson was trying to bring the football in, but couldn't do it. Let's go down to Sam Ryan right now. Well, Jeff, you see Keontae Marshall back in the game. He was on the bench last quarter, tightening of his back. The trainer stretched him out a little bit. He's fine now. It's funny you were mentioning the American Idol lookalike, Ruben Stutter, you were calling him. He told us a few weeks ago he was out with some of his friends, and people thought he was Ruben Stutter of American Idol. He said his buddies said that people kept coming up to them and said, is that really Ruben? Is that really Ruben? So they went along with it for a while, but he said he just can't sing like Ruben, guys. <laughs> Any way to meet women, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Draw a little attention. Play to your strengths. That's right. Third and ten. <laughs> Bowen Camp. And firing a strike. And it's in Grand Valley territory. A fine catch by Caleb Johnson. But credit Bowen Camp putting the football right where he had to gain a 15 and a first down. Boy, you know, he was known as a special teams player coming into the season and has had a pretty big year for uh, for. North Dakota's Caleb Johnson. I like him a lot the way he runs patterns. He has a presence in mind to get to the first down marker, then turn his route around. So when he catches the football, he's going to be at first down yardage. Well, that's a smart, smart football player. First down from the 45 yard line. North Dakota fans starting to look at the clock. Draw play. Nothing. Good defense by Grand Valley and ripped it midfield. Great job by their men up front, and it's a loss of three. Yeah, they've gone with a run on first down a couple of times now, and Grand Valley State, they stack it in. They go eight men in the box there, and they got man-to-man -man coverage on a slot and a wide-out receiver. I thought maybe John Bowenkamp should have should have audible to a, a pass route. He's got man-to-man, -man, which is exactly what you want. Let the receivers win for you. A little bit easier to work outside and man-to-man -man than try to run in there with all those guys in the box. Well, Caleb Johnson rolled an ankle. Second and 15 after the loss. Here comes the blitz. Across the middle. Wide open is Stroth. And Stroth is put down at the 38-yard line by Dion Charity. A gain of 13. Nice play. Well, they've run this play a couple of times where they just drag Brandon Stroth underneath coverage. They commit to a lot, and he just comes right underneath, under under everybody. He's going to come right in the vision of his quarterback, and now it's just speed to try to get to the outside and pick up the first down. A little natural pick there as the receiver re releases outside. Brandon Stroth comes underneath. Well, that's an easy one to complete. I think I may jump down and complete that no, one no, right no, now. Don't do that. Steve. I don't know. The yeah. rain, the cold weather. No, no. I'm going to stay right here. Too cold Space heater. I, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Third and short for North Dakota, the Fighting Sioux. They need points, and they need a first down. Here's Bowen Camp on the run, and it's incomplete. 
difficult throw and well covered was Willis Stadelman. And there you wonder if maybe he should have kept the football. You know, he, he's moved around pretty good. Question we had is whether or not he runs the 4 6. Right now, you're thinking just pick up the first down, your third down and short, and you're able, you can pick it up right here. Just run the football. Stick your head in there a little bit. You're going to get hit anyway. You may as well pick up a first down, come back, and keep this drive going. Now you got to convert fourth down. Well, it's getting to the point. Down 10 nothing, unable to generate any offensive points in this football game where you got to go for it on fourth down and you have to get it. And North Dakota wants a timeout. You know, looking back. We'll talk about that yep. when we come back. We too will take a timeout. 10 nothing. The Lakers lead the fighting suit. Well, the Grand Valley fans have lost absolutely none of their zeal. <laughs> they lose some time at school being sick, but it's right. better than that. Fourth and two for North Dakota. Bowen Kent wants to throw. And it's complete. First down. Dan Grossman making the reception inside the 30 to the 28. A 10-yard pickup on fourth down. Well, they motion underneath, and they run the pick scheme. That if you get man-to-man -man coverage, it just creates natural picks for receivers to come underneath. They're trying to blitz and bring a lot of pressure on John Bowen camp, and they're just picking each other off. Here he motions across, and it's, you're going to see him come right into your screen here on a natural pick with a receiver releasing down the field. He comes underneath. Boy, that's been there all this, this whole second half for North Dakota. First down from the 28 on the ground. Here's Roland. And Adam Roland, great effort. Look at Roland go down to the 10-yard line. A great effort, a 17-yard run. Scott Mackey brought him down at long last. You know, early in the football game, they came out. Brandon Stroke was the guy. Here, Adam Roland, right here. You match speed. You come at it with power. Boy, he's just making people bounce off, bounce off him, and you called it. What a great effort in the mud. Wet, wet football field, just running with power and strength. First down. Look at the first downs. Rolling again this time. And he runs into a wall of dark jerseys. The ESPN game track. Well, with all due respect to the Arrhythmics, here comes the rain in North Alabama. And man, has it been raining here in the second half. The biggest play of the ballgame so far, Lucius Hawkins. He causes the fumble, he scoops it up, and the diminutive number one is on his way. And from there, Michael Tennessee slams in 4-6. Tell you what, if you're talking about MVPs in this game, maybe Lucius Hawkins. Yeah, that was a is huge play in, in this football game, and it turned everything around for uh, Grand Valley State. North Dakota's they're on the move here and this is the area of the field where they've got to have some points right at this particular time in the ball game. Now at quarterback is Lee Gresham. And penalty marker. And that's going to be a motion penalty with a new quarterback under center. A different voice. Fire the snap. Just let it run down. on the offense. Five yards. Second down. But the play clock got down around zero and Maybe someone flinched there for a second. Maybe trying to get a little speed in was the reason they brought in Joe Wilson. But, uh, excuse me, Lee Groschel lines up. With, he was he was a quarterback out of high school and uh, threw for a uh, school record 39 touchdown passes, a season record, 1,900 yards, 3,500 for his high school career. So John Bowen Kent back in, second and long. Here comes the blitz. Bowen Camp gets rid of it. Man, wide open is Caleb Johnson, who couldn't hang on to the football, and maybe he was looking to see when and where he was going to get hit. Well, just thrown a little bit on his back shoulder, but he's made some tough catches, and that's when you got to have a receiver come through for you. In a game type situation like this, you need points, you need to keep the chains moving right there. You got to have that catch. It's a little bit behind you. Maybe John Bowen Camp, he sees the safety trying to slow him down so he doesn't absorb a big hit. You throw it on his back shoulder a little bit to slow him down, but, man, you've got to have that catch. Now third and 17, you see the third down conversion numbers. 
inside of 10 minutes to play in the game. Grand Valley up by 10. Bowen Camp with time now throwing into the end zone and over the head of his receiver Willis Stadelman who was well covered by Grand Valley. Yeah, he locked on to, to uh, Stradelman there and didn't even look anywhere else try to pump fake and get the safety Scott Mackey to move and bite but they're going to have to have some points here they can't couldn't afford to go backwards on that play I thought it was a smart decision once you commit to it and it's not there throw it away and allow for a field goal attempt because they're going to need three points in this ball game at some point there's a lot of time left on this clock Jeff Jeff Glass has missed from 46 and 43 this would be a 35 yard field goal attempt with Bowen camp holding high snap and this time the kick is good. So at long last, North Dakota is on the scoreboard. And now a little momentum, a little lift. Finally, they get some points. Now down a touchdown here in the fourth quarter. The NCAA Division II Championship brought to you by Pontiac, the official performance machines of the NCAA. Back in Florence, Alabama, and if you're a North Dakota fan, you're feeling a little bit better. At long last, your team will not be shut out, and now only down a touchdown with plenty of time left in the game. And a lift. I mean, if you don't get that field goal, yeah. you start thinking about the number one ranked hockey team at North Dakota, <laughs> and no, they uh, may win a national it just, championship. Uh, it just kills the morale of the football team. If you go down, you miss that one. You have an opportunity to get yourself back in the ball game, but he made it, so it does the opposite. It lifts the sideline of North Dakota. They're playing well defensively. It should be a fantastic finish. Jeff Glass kicking off, and Brandon Langston is deep. Here comes Langston. And down at the 25-yard line, a return of about 15 yards. And tonight at 9 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2, looking forward to Memphis and Illinois fighting a line on number 14, Anthony Rice. John Calipari's club looking pretty good these days and uh, Illinois of course the great tradition of basketball we did Illinois Wisconsin football and there were a lot of people talking about the basketball team and that was in October <laughs> that's a bad sign <laughs> when you start talking basketball in October right? I, I think those folks were on to something given the Illini football team this year first and ten from the 25 the freshman quarterback, great effort, great effort getting the first down, and he is up to the 39-yard line, a gain of 12. Eric Halstenson making the tackle, but that was a great job. Boy, look at this. The first half, 197 yards, 14 first downs. Since then, only 58 yards and three first downs for Grand Valley State, and that's because North Dakota has just stepped up defensively and played outstanding football here in this second half. A lot of Laker fans here. A lot of homemade signs here as well. <laughs> Some of them not so good. We're creative though. <laughs> There's plenty of time on that bus ride. And a handoff, Tennessee. And lunging up to the 44 yard line running into Jake Nordic gain of six second and four well they're having some success on the ground which does a couple of things crying grinds out some clock for uh, for Grand Valley State try to milk this clock down a little bit but you still want to move the chains and pick up first downs they can grind it out boy that, that's that is the ingredient for them in the in this fourth quarter look at the rushing yards I, mean, I thought that would be just the opposite with North too. Dakota. That is surprising. Too. Second and four. Bell Infinity. And a hit from behind, but very close to midfield. Should be enough for a first down. It's about four or five. Steve Brennan from West Fargo, North Dakota, the outside linebacker. He's a freshman, freshman on freshman, 6'3", 225 pounds. Kind of surprised not to... Uh, you see North Dakota not trying to tackle the football. You got a quarterback running it. They're not, you know, he's a little more used to it than most quarterbacks around the country. But uh, yet and still, you start reaching in there, trying to strip it out and, and rake it out of there, get you a turnover. First down for the Lakers of Brian Kelly. Can they make it two straight Division II national championships? Kennedy. 
And North Dakota Territory brought down at the 48 by Jake Nordic, his fourth tackle of the ball game. The overhead view of Florence, Alabama, and Brelly Municipal Stadium is courtesy of the Saturn Lightship. Keep your eye on the sky when the Saturn Lightship visits a major event near you. And Andre, I, I don't know about you, but I think we should take the Saturn Lightship with us <laughs> wherever we go. I like the coverage, and uh, I really do. They zoom right in there. It's a great view. I agree. Some Saturn Lightship, they, any game we do, let's bring them along. Some guys have their own theme song. That's right. We have our own Lightship. <laughs> Second and six. Finnerty, 17 carries, 78 yards. Here's Tennessee picking and choosing and upended. Uh, maybe the 43 yard line by Josh Branstead. And he gets four yards. Boy, if you're North Dakota, you got to get concerned now because Grand Valley State, they're running the football, which essentially is running the clock as well, and they're able to move it. So you got to make an adjustment here pretty quick to stop this running game, force them to pick it up and maybe throw some incompletions. And you can get the football back, but this is not the, uh, the remedy to get back in this football game by allowing for too much on first and second down. 8 of 13 on third down. Now third and three from the 44-yard line. And a timeout taken by Grand Valley State. Brian Kelly, what a fine job he has done with freshmen, with veterans, trying to get the second national title. Can he do it? Sort of a George Clinton Parliament look. Are you, are you old enough to remember that? I, I know George Clinton Parliament very well. <laughs> I'm Jeff Fullinger with Andre Ware. How about the concerns for both of these teams at this point? North Dakota's got to get the football back. Yeah, they got to take some risks now. Get some guys around the football, the line of scrimmage. They've got to stop the run because Grand Valley State now is moving the football on the ground, which is chewing up a lot of clock. Third and two. Flea flicker. In trouble, and down he goes at the 42 is Mark Catlin. And two penalty markers come sailing in. And Danny Gagner is the one who got to him. Boy, and I mean, he closed with tremendous speed and didn't allow for, uh, for Mark Catlin to get that pass off. That was going to be a uh, end around and a pass. And oh, my goodness. Oh, man. What a face mask, and what a tremendous play that's going to be wiped out by Danny Gagner. He's going to give uh, Grand Valley State a first down. Hey, that how was about that bailout? Call, how about that flea flicker? You like that? No, I, I can keep it on the keep mm. it on the ground right here. If you're going to hand it off. They got one of the best backs in the in the GLIAC conference in Michael uh, Tennessee. I give it to him. I keep it in his hands. But boy, you're just trying to make a play yeah. here, and it's just unfortunate that uh, the that he comes mask. up with a face mask. And it's oh, that's still, a killer. Yeah, that 15 yarder. For, mm. That is a killer. Mm. Kid's just trying to make a play and he gets there and face mask got in the way. Mm. So first and 10 from the 30 yard lot. I think you take that same approach. You still got to. Got to shut down the run. Look at this time of possession. It's just about even. Dead even. Dead even. A hanging chad in there, perhaps. <laughs> Still working that clock. On first down. Venerdy. And tripped up. At the 27-yard line by Brooke Meyer. The sophomore from Jamestown, North Dakota. Well, it's important that they get a stop here early in this one, in this possession, because they only have one timeout left. So they have, uh, Grand Valley State's going to work this down all the way to just about a, a second or two before they snap the football, work as much clock as they possibly can. For North Dakota, you may be thinking about that face mask all winter long. Yeah. And here's the throw by Finnerty, and it is caught at the 24-yard line by Micah Staley. A smart pass there. Gets four. Not not much high risk to it. Just going to flip it out wide and coverage is backed off. That's why I said North Dakota at this point in the game, they've got to take some some chances, come up, play some man to man and, and get some guys around the line of scrimmage, get eight men in that box and try to shut down the run. 
And that's going to expose you a little bit on the outside, but that's you know, at some point you've got to take a chance. It's like a third base coach. Signal in and in, right? <laughs> Put the signal in. It's the take signal. Well, that play clock's down about three, two seconds. Third and five. Finnerty in trouble. And Finnerty hit behind the line of scrimmage by Dan Olsberger, who does a fine job. It'll bring up fourth down. Plenty of time on the clock, and this, this is a long field goal. As the rain stops, so that won't affect it much, but uh, this this will be a long attempt if they choose to kick a field goal. Well, the one thing about North Dakota, even though they don't have a touchdown in this ball game, they have shown in the second yes. half that they can move the football. And they can, they've hit some big plays on the outside, up the middle as well, so... If they are able to get the football back here, they, they very well could get themselves back in this ball game. They just got to get the football. David Hendricks, 43-yard field goal attempt. He is hit from 19 yards out, and there was no win at all as we look at the flag in the far end zone. And just trying to sneak in there, it's no good. So if you're North Dakota, you get second life here. You've got three minutes and 54 seconds. A lot of time. Some way, somehow, to find the end zone. Well, you got a lot of time. You got an experienced quarterback. John Bowen Camp, he can work the outside. You got one timeout. That's an eternity. Yeah, in college football, every first down they get, the clock's going to stop to move the chains. So it, it is a lot of time in this ball game. They've just got to go down, march it down, have a, a, a bunch of successful plays to get themselves in scoring position. And you know what, Jeff? When they get down there, they got to punch it in. We had talked all week, and, and a lot of folks who follow Division II had also echoed the fact that we thought we'd see a lot of points. Yeah. And defense has been the story of this football game. All right, first and ten for North Dakota. They need a touchdown. Under four minutes to play in the ball game for the Division II National Championship. And a dangerous pass is caught by Willis Stadelman. And Stadelman gets two. It'll bring up second and eight. And it'll keep the clock moving. It's getting closer and closer to they run that play on first down a lot. And all of a sudden, Grand Valley State's starting to bite on it. You'll see him go out there and maybe pump it. The receiver that's picking for him or blocking will turn up the sideline, and he's going to have him wide open because they are committing to stopping that little screen pass. It's going to happen here sooner or later. And that's the one, if you get to third down, that maybe you go to that. They run a lot of plays to set up plays. Huh? Yeah, exactly. They set up plays. They do an excellent job of setting up plays. Second and seven, Bowen Kent coming near side, and a fine catch by Jesse Ollers. Ollers down at the 31, maybe the 32. Scott Mackey on the coverage, he gets five. But really a terrific catch where he had to spin his body around yeah, and get you, the football. You, you work on that in, in net drills and things of that sort. And it's called low and behind, high and behind. You work those passes because not every pass from the quarterback is going to be perfect. you got to get your body twisted around to make some, some fantastic catches sometimes. And he did so there. Chuck Martin, the fine defensive coordinator. Done a great job of orchestrating the defense of Grand Valley. Now what a unit they are. Third and three. Here comes the blitz. Bowen Camp has a man out there. It's complete. First down. Caleb Johnson making the grab and out of bounds in front of the Grand Valley bench. Boy, John Bowen Camp has got a big time arm. He's all the way over on the right side, the right hash mark, and that throw goes all the way back to the left side numbers on a line, and that takes a lot of arm strength and accuracy to go with it. Here you're going to see it. Caleb Johnson just releases to the flat, and this is coming from the right hash mark, which is all the way across the field, and it is right on the money. So first down for the Fighting Sioux. And they are fighting for their football lives right now. The 225 left in the ball game. Across the middle, it's caught. Stadelman up to the 49-yard line, getting close to another first down. He gets eight, runs into Lucius Hawkins, who came up with a big turnover in the third quarter. Boy, they're doing an excellent job of protecting and picking up the blitz. Big Ben Murphy, the center, Chris Cooper, the right guard as well. He's standing in there, and that crossing route that we've we've watched it happen over and over throughout this ball game. When they blitz, somebody's going to show up right in the middle of that formation. That's what you call watching a lot of film and knowing the tendencies of a defense when they blitz. Inside of two minutes to play. Five wide receivers. Johnson now in motion. 
Bowen Camp firing a strike. It's caught by Johnson at the 39 yard line, working on Scott Mackey, gain of 12, and they will move the chains for a first down. Yeah, Jesse Allers comes in on that same exact play, that little underneath route, and he's going to show up right in the screen right now. They cut it off, but they go right behind him to Caleb Johnson, who's working the deeper portion of that route. They 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 protect against the shorter one but forget about Caleb Johnson who's crossing behind him. They have been playing football at North Dakota since 1894 and this is one of the most important drives in school history. And they are on the move. Blitz coming. Bowen Camp gets rid of it. A high catch and spun down is Jesse Ollers who went up top to make the grab. He gets five. It'll bring up second and five. You know, they've used it and it's always come from the right side of the formation. Maybe you, you switch the formation and come from the left side. A timeout for North Dakota. They're getting closer. Can they do it? Can they get the touchdown? Coca-Cola brings you championship expressions. Division I college football, forever defined by polls, writers, broadcasters, coaches, and computers. But here in Division II, they play for the championship and the trophy. This is what it's about. Inside of two minutes to play, a minute seven left. Second and five for North Dakota, down by a touchdown to the defending champion, Grand Valley State. Blitz coming. Bowen Camp gets rid of it, and Johnson makes the grab. At about the 30-yard line, he gets six, and it's very close to a first down, and now under a minute. Yeah, they should have had two plays called with a timeout so they can line up in a formation and go right to the second play that they had called during that timeout. Third and less than one. Bowen Camp firing downfield. Wide open. It's caught inside the 20. Dan Grossman making the grab. 14 yards and a first down. Now they're going to have some time because the chains are moving. Get everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Get them set. Looks like they may go to the clock situation here where he's just going to spike the football. But they had time to get a play call. And Bowen Camp spiking the football with 38 seconds left. Do you keep biting off yardage, or do you try and go for six at this point? Well, you know, you've got plenty of time to just kind of maybe bite off a little bit more. At some point, you're going to have to take that shot to the end zone when you... I, I actually thought right there they had time with the chains moving, that they could have gotten themselves a, a play called maybe from the wristband. And call a play and get to the line of scrimmage, get yourself set, and not have to burn first down. The two head coaches dueling here in Alabama. In the cold of December, second and ten. Bowen Camp with the pressure coming, and it's incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 34 seconds left. Caleb Johnson was open. Yeah, they can still get a first down here, just inside the uh, the seven yard line, which will, will get them in the first down yardage again. Lucius Hawkins, their outside rusher, is able to put a little pressure on John Bowen Camp, make him uncomfortable on second down. Here we got that third down and 10 again. There we go. Third and 10 with 34 seconds left. The fighting Sioux, they need a touchdown. Bowen Camp in trouble. On the run. Into the end zone. And oh, he had a man in the back of the end zone. Dan Grossman was out there. But I don't think he saw the back of the end zone, Andre. No, he didn't. He had him wide open. Dan Grossman just keeps working across the back side of the end zone. And if he's able to set his feet, he got away from pressure. Go ahead and set your feet and try to throw him a, 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 a catchable football. Bowen Kemp, 28 of 38, 227 yards. And that broke the record for completions in a championship game of 28. Here we go, fourth down. Like I mentioned, they can still get a first down. They get it just past the seven-yard line, so. At stake, the national championship. Grand Valley trying to make it two in a row. Here's Bowen Camp firing, and it's picked off! It's intercepted! 
There it is. Mike Hogue coming up with the football, the middle linebacker. The interception of John Bowenkamp and Grand Valley will repeat as national champions of Division II football. Yeah, he may have tried to force one in there. He felt the clock ticking down. The you know, quarterback clock in his mind that uh, you've got to get the football out. Pressure's coming. He had a lot of time. Tries to force one in between two defenders there. And going to Caleb Johnson, who's made a lot of big plays for him. Well, that was definitely a force. Let's take a look. There it is, the Pontiac high-performance moment. Mike Hode, the man of the moment, up with the football. And Grand Valley State survives. They find redemption against a North Dakota team that had defeated them in 2001 for the national title. That went to the Fighting Sioux 17-14. But this time, it's Grand Valley State near Grand Rapids, Michigan, with 21,000 students, many of them here, celebrating a national championship in Division II. North Dakota had won 11 in a row. They had lost to Mesa State in Grand Junction, Colorado, and I think a lot of fans in North Dakota didn't believe that they would be here for this game, so they have been a very pleasant surprise in the Northland. You know, they, they, they were here two years ago and got a chance to uh, to come away with a victory over this great this same Grand Valley State team and now you, you want to soak this up and, and don't forget this forget how it feels you want to get back here they got a lot of young players and I wouldn't be surprised to uh, to see North Dakota back in this football again football game again next season for Grand Valley State led by Brian Kelly he's been there 13 years took the head coaching job in his 20s now there are questions Will he be courted by Division I programs? Eastern Michigan came a courting. He wasn't interested. Yeah. But there will be other opportunities, I'm sure, for Kelly. And you think about Jim Tressel, how he was able to make the move to Division I. And Kelly is supremely organized. Mm -hmm. and, and, and his ability really to, to mold the kind of talent he has into a system that works, I think really defines what he does as a head coach. I think so. And, and the ability to coach with this, the situation that they're in, they only really have two full-time assistants. And the rest, two, two grad assistants and then two... Uh, two student assistants as well so they do an outstanding job here as well a lot of ball games won at Grand Valley State somebody will knock if not you know it would be unfortunate but I can't imagine him not having an opportunity congratulations to both Grand Valley State and North Dakota but it's the Lakers who repeat as national champions of Division II, 10 to 3 against the Fighting Sioux. Up next, Sports Center for post-game coverage. Turn to ESPN News. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Andre Ware, Sam Ryan, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Jeff Hellinger. For summaries and stats of this game, log on to ESPN.com. Your home for college football on the internet. Three straight berths in the national title game is a great achievement, but winning two of those games will put Grand Valley into the stratosphere of great program, not just great team. Not great offense to start out against North Dakota Lakers. Cullen Finnerty back in the pocket, going to the end zone. It is up, but no. They would have to settle for a David Hendricks field goal right here to cap the drive. It is up, and it is through 3-0 Lakers. Defense from there out in the first half. Finnerty later is going to put it up, and again, it is not going to connect. Actually, that one is picked off. 3-0 is the score at the break. It's the lowest first-half score in championship game history. Third quarter, a spark. Lucius Hawkins with the sack, the strip, and the recovery. He is racing down the sidelines and in to end the territory. That leads to the little guy, Michael Tennessee, running hard and taking it in from just about a yard out, 10-0 Grand Valley. Fighting Sioux would get a field goal, and then they're trying to tie. Under a minute to go inside the 20. It is fourth down, and it is Grand Valley linebacker Mike Hode getting the biggest pick of his life. It is over. Back to back, baby. 10-3 final, two titles in two years for GVSU. Hawkins, 59-yard return sets up the game's only touch. Lakers' only loss of the season was to Saginaw Valley in midseason. They finished 14 and one and have a boatload of young guys coming back next year on the roster. So it is two in a row, and this time it's the defense putting GVSU over the top. Our Daryl Schur has more with the happy bunch in Florence. The Lakers doing what they've done all year long, scoring enough points to keep them in the game and letting the defense take care of the rest. We thought three scores 
time of possession, and not give North Dakota a short field to operate with the things that we want to do. So we're just eking out a living. You know, we're just trying to manage and, and find a way uh, to, to, to get a win. And it's not pretty by any stretch of the imagination, but there's no pictures on that championship trophy. We expect them to play well, and um, we just try to do enough not to lose the game for those guys because we know if we don't turn the ball over, they're going to win it for us, and that's what happened today. They won it for us. The D-line is about staying all year, and uh, as a linebacker, when you have a strong D-line like that, it, makes, it frees you up a lot, and uh, not a lot of blockers are getting to you, so our D-line's been playing sensational all season. So with the defense holding the suited, no points in the first half, the offense finally got going and put an actual touchdown on the board. I sat and watched last year, so to actually come out here and, you know, be a part of it and, you know, have the game winning touchdown, you know, it's just the, the greatest feeling in the world. I'm in a dream still. I don't think I'll ever wake up, and I don't want to. I knew it was going to come down to the fourth quarter. Somebody was going to stop somebody, or somebody was going to go up and make a big play. Uh, it was going to be a touchdown game, and um, that's what it exactly turned out. Well, on that last drive when they were coming down, uh, well, I know how the uh, seniors felt two years ago when, uh, when they lost, and I was thinking back in my head, I don't want to feel like that again, especially after that game two years ago. It's incredible. I mean, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Back-to-back -back national champs. It's, I mean, it's my first, this is my first year starting, so it's a, it's a dream right now. It's incredible. So the Lakers pick up their second straight national championship. Not a pretty game by any means, but at the end, it really didn't matter. In Florence, Alabama, Daryl Schur, Fox 17 Sports. This season was beyond belief. 20 players listed on the Lakers 2 deep roster at the beginning of the year didn't play a single snap last season. But while experience was lacking, Coach Kelly knew his defense would be good, and now he knows it's great. It was definitely the defense that took over the Division II championship game in the second half. How about this? Grand Valley clinging to a three-point lead when Lucius Hawkins hits the quarterback, picks up the loose ball, rumbles down the sideline, a weak block there, so he doesn't quite get into the end zone, but they'll take it. They have the ball at the 20, and then just a couple of plays later, it's Michael Tennessee. Tennessee invading Alabama, as one sign said. Very cleverly, I might add. That gives Grand Valley State a 10-3 lead, and then the defense comes up with one more big play. We've already seen it. Mike Hode with the big pick on fourth down to secure the victory, and how about it? Brian Kelly knows how his team earned their second straight Division II title. Grand Valley will repeat. I give North Dakota a, a great deal of credit, but our defense has just answered the bell the last three weeks and have not let up a touchdown now uh, in 12 consecutive quarters in playoff competition. And um, that's, uh, that's a lot to be said. This game can be won in many different ways. Um, and we won it today playing great defense and not making mistakes on offense. The Lakers defense continues to dominate as the Grand Valley State University Lakers grab their second straight national title. Well, it was uh, earlier this season when Coach Brian Kelly said he was experiencing deja vu and uh, he was hoping to uh, avoid that this time. Remember this uh, when they were playing North Dakota last time, they gave up a last minute touchdown that surrendered the national championship. Today that was not to happen as Grand Valley State jumps on the board early on with the David Hendricks field goal. That makes it three to nothing. And then it's up to the defense. Lucius Hawkins comes storming in on the blitz. He gets the hit, causes the fumble, and he gets the fumble recovery. He goes rumbling down the sideline. He runs it all the way back to the 20-yard line before he's finally forced out of bounds, putting Grand Valley State in prime position to convert. They do that with a Michael Tennessee run, which was set up by Cohen Finnerty. Everybody getting into the act on this one. Finnerty stretching out. He is out by about the two-yard line, and then Finnerty hands off to Michael Tennessee. He plunges in. That gives Grand Valley State the 10-0 lead, but their defense had to hold on. Back in 2001, they gave up a last-minute touchdown pass. This time, my code says, no, no, no. I will take the interception, put this one in the bag with 20 seconds left. The Grand Valley State Lakers win their second straight national title, getting revenge on North Dakota. John Richard was down there for us, and uh, he captures the sights and the sounds of jubilation. It's overwhelming, man. It's too much right now. I'm done. My last game. Going out getting revenge on him, it's too much. We have a lot of confidence in our team. Our defense stopped him. This team's known for one minute comebacks, and our defense stopped him. It was a huge testament to them. We had some points off turnovers. Great game.
Well, you know, you got to win them on the field, JR. I mean, you got to win football games to, to be able to pound your chest and say, we are the program. And, uh, you know, we've won football games. We're 47-2 and two in our last 49 games, and those two losses have been rectified. Uh, this is the greatest feeling in the world. It's like a dream. Um, you know, we, we had to ride the backs of our defense all year, and we rolled the backs today. They set me up for that touchdown, so, you know, it, it was my job and duty to get it in. Bringing home that first national champion is an unbelievable feeling. It's almost tough to compare, but especially being a senior, I think it's uh, even a little more special, knowing that's like probably the last game of my life. Number one for the second straight year, Lakers over the Fighting Sioux 10-3 to from Florence, Alabama, and with the national champion Grand Valley State Lakers. I'm John Richard for your 24-hour News 8 Sports.